What's up guys? It's your boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Uchiha Reviving the Clan with Harem System. Part 1. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Land of Fire, Kanoha Village. Residents of the Ichiha clan. Ichiha Sasuke walked on the road, his eyes filled with hatred, confusion, and panic. There was even a hint of unreality. The once bustling residence, with people coming and going, was now deserted. Ants were licking the unclean blood, crows emitted eerie cries, making this place feel like a haunted house, cold and lifeless. Because half a month ago, a horrifying massacre occurred here. Ichiha Atachi, a renegade ninja of the Ichiha clan, killed all the members of the Ichiha clan, and left triumphantly. The renowned Ichiha clan of the Sengoku period was almost completely wiped out, leaving only two remaining members in the clan. Sasuke arrived at a simple small building, where a handsome young man was standing at the entrance. He was about 17 or 18 years old, flowing black hair, and a handsome face that was typical of the Ichiha clan. The back of his clothes also had the same ping pong ball emblem as Sasuke. Brother Natsuo Sasuke's voice was hoarse. Sasuke, you're back from the hospital. Ichiha Natsuo looked at the young boy in front of him and smiled gently. His voice was soft. How's your body? Do you still feel uncomfortable anywhere? The vast Ichiha clan is now reduced to just the two of us. We can't afford any more problems. Sasuke moved his lips, biting them tightly, as if trying to hold back the urge to cry. Yes, the Ichiha clan was now only the two of them. One was himself, who was deliberately spared by Ichiha Atachi, and the other was this fortunate Natsuo. The reason Natsuo was alive was that before the Ichiha clan was annihilated by Atachi, Chunin Natsuo had gone out on a mission and hadn't returned for half a year. He had already been considered a sacrifice by Konoha who would have thought that he would return after the Ichiha clan was annihilated by Itachi. Just a few hours later, if he had come back a little earlier, he would have been gone too. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for brother Natsuo. Sasuke bit his lip hard, almost drawing blood. Otherwise, he didn't know what he would do as a lonely person. Be good, everything will be fine. Natsuo gently patted his back. Don't cry. We are the last members of the Ichiha clan, representing the glory of the Ichiha clan. A true Ichiha man would rather shed blood than tears. Okay? Sasuke wiped away his tears forcefully, making his eyes red, although Natsuo felt somewhat invisible within the Ichiha clan. But now that there were only the two of them left, Sasuke immediately felt the warmth of a family member from him. Natsuo comforted him softly for a while. After a moment of silence, he asked, Sasuke, is the son of the clan head, you should inherit the position of the Ichiha clan head. Although you're still young, I don't see you as just a child. So, what are your plans for the future? Brother Natsuo, how can someone like me? The brother of an assassin, be worthy of being the clan head. Sasuke smiled bitterly, with a hint of self-mockery. But when I was in the hospital, I had already thought about it. I want to revive the clan. And then his eyes were filled with hatred. I must personally kill that man. Although he was only a seven-year-old child, his killing intent was palpable. But soon, his killing intent subsided, and he looked up and asked. What about you, brother Natsuo? I have a clear understanding of my own abilities. Natsuo smiled with bitterness and self-deprecation. Revenge is no longer a realistic hope. So I plan to dedicate myself to doing everything I can to revive the Ichiha clan. Okay? Sasuke nodded vigorously. In that case, let's work hard together, brother Natsuo. Train hard, make a name for ourselves in the ninja world, and revive the Ichiha clan. However, Natsu shook his head. No, Sasuke, you have a too narrow view of reviving the Ichiha clan. Do you think reviving the Ichiha clan means producing a powerful ninja? No. Natsu gestured to the deserted residents. Look at this place. With only the two of us in the Ichiha clan, even if we both train like crazy and become top-level experts like Ichiha Madara we still wouldn't have the right to claim that we have revived the Ichiha clan. What the revival of the Ichiha clan needs most is population. We should start by having children. Sasuke was instantly dumbfounded. Next, let's see if we can fall to Azuzi. Natsuo had a seemingly indifferent expression on the surface, but internally he sighed lightly. Although I feel a little bad that I have to deceive Azuzi. But considering that the original plot didn't focus much on the revival of the Ichiha clan until the end of the series, 
It's better that I take care of it. When Natsuo transmigrated and realized that he had traveled to the most dangerous time for the Achiha clan, he was completely dumbfounded. Did he really have to become a background character during Itachi's annihilation of the clan? Considering that he had a second chance at life, he would fight against his destiny. So, he first tried to train hard, intending to learn from other transmigrators, and kill Itachi like they did, but he failed. At 17 years old, Natsuo was still just a chunin. Although he couldn't be considered a slacker, his talent was probably only at the level of an ordinary Achiha. Then Natsuo considered trying to change the minds of Itachi, Shisui, and others who were brainwashed by the third Hokage. But he failed again. The third Hokage's brainwashing was deeply ingrained, and Itachi and Shisui, although they could barely be considered positive Achiha, were even more paranoid than ordinary Achiha. Natsuo was seen by them as a great Achihaist, and their relationship was indifferent. Helpless, Natsuo decided to rely on the power of the clan to see if he could integrate the entire Achiha's strength, and then contact other major clans in Konoha. Perhaps there would be some opportunities, but he still failed. The Achiha clan revered power, and a mere Chunin had no say. Fine, if I can't provoke them, can't I avoid them? With this belief, Natsuo simply took on a mission outside the village and played dead. After all, he was an orphan when he transmigrated here, and had no relatives or close friends, nor any feelings for members of the Achiha clan. But then something happened that forced him to return to Konoha. The system was activated more children, more blessings. At the age of 18, Natsuo finally obtained his golden finger that every transmigrator needed. However, the effect of this cheat required an ample number of descendants to take effect. In history, there have been three individuals who were the most prolific in terms of offspring. Natsuo thought to himself, Genghis Khan, some scholars estimated that he impregnated more than 1,000 women during his reign. Yu Sheng, the prince of Zhongshan during the Han Dynasty, had over 120 sons, not counting daughters. Malay Ismail, the second sultan of Morocco, had 525 sons and 342 daughters. Their common characteristics were wealth, status, and women. Then Natsuo, who knew that part of the story, realized that in order to use the system, he first needed to have wealth and status. And as an ordinary Chunin, even if he abandoned his conscience and forcefully took women from the common people, he still couldn't meet the standards of those big shots mentioned above. The only thing he could rely on was the status and vast heritage of the Achiha clan. That's why he had to return to Konoha and manipulate Sasuke here. Sasuke furrowed his brows and fell into deep thought. Because he is seven years old, Natsuo's words gave him a very strange feeling. To revive the Achiha clan, it didn't rely on powerful experts who stood at the top of the shinobi world, but on having children. This didn't align with his understanding at all. But looking at the rare and desolate Achiha clan residents, Sasuke had to admit that Natsuo's words seemed to make some sense. Natsuo, what you said makes sense, Sasuke furrowed his brows. The clan members are essential for the revival of the Achiha. Things like reputation should come second. Just that he looked at his own young face. Is this a bit too much for a seven-year-old child? You don't need to do these things now. Natsuo smiled and said, your talent is much stronger than mine. If there is a chance for revenge for the Achiha in the future, it must be you. Killing that man is my responsibility. Sasuke immediately breathed a sigh of relief and quickly said, Natsuo, you just focus on having children. Leave revenge and everything to me. Not just revenge, you should also train and find a suitable wife. Natsuo glanced at him and said, that is your responsibility as an Achiha. Sasuke's expression became somewhat awkward. He was annoyed by the chattering girls in school. Why were Naruto and the others always chasing after girls? However, Natsuo's words were not over yet. With a wife, you have to pamper and cherish her in order for her to give birth to your children. After the child is born, you have to change diapers, make baby food, teach them to speak, buy toys, and accompany your wife in entertaining the child. Listening to this, Sasuke's expression became even more unpleasant. Just thinking about this scene made him feel very uncomfortable. He could only look at Natsuo helplessly. Natsuo, can't we divide the tasks I'll take care of revenge? and you can take care of reviving the clan. We can, but Sasuke, raising children requires a lot of money. Natsuo shook his head and said, I'm just a poor Chunin. With my own strength, I don't know when I can revive the Achiha clan. That's simple. Sasuke became spirited upon hearing this. The third Hokage talked to me about it. Although the Achiha clan members may be deceased, their assets are still there. According to the village system, they will be left to us. We won't like money. But Sasuke, those are the belongings of the future clan head, how can I take them? No, Natsuo, Itachi committed such a great crime, how can I be qualified to inherit the position of clan head? Not to mention, the Achiha clan has always valued strength over bloodline. I think you, Natsuo, are the most suitable to be the clan head of the Achiha. But Natsuo furrowed his brows lightly. However, Sasuke decisively said, it's settled then. Let Natsuo handle the hard work. He didn't want to revolve around women all day. Well, Natsuo looked hesitant, but under Sasuke's insistence, he reluctantly said, all right then. So, you'll be responsible for avenging the Achiha clan, and I'll be responsible for strengthening the Achiha. 
Brothers united, their benefits will be as strong as gold. Let's do our best. Clap. The hands of the two, one big and one small, tightly held together, their gaze is incredibly determined. Sasuke is completely sincere. As the legendary straight man of steel who stabbed Karen with his Chidori in the original plot, he is the only one in the Naruto series. Not to mention the current Sasuke, even in the future era of Boruto, where he takes on the great responsibility of reviving the Achiha clan. He only has one daughter, Sarada. Although, during the original plot, before embarking on his journey to redeem himself, he expressed his desire to begin a relationship with Sakura and promised to meet again, because he did not return to Kanoa for so long. It was Sakura who sought him out later, and they even traveled together for an extended period of time. During this time is when his daughter was born. Sasuke is a person who puts his goals above all else, and considers women as something that can make him waver on his path. If it weren't for Sakura who loved him despite not reciprocating his feelings until the end of the series, and by letting go of his hatred and desire for revenge, after the final battle with Naruto, whom Sasuke loves, the Ichiha clan could have ended his generation. Natsuo feels that this situation is a win-win. It was unexpected for Sasuke to pass on the position of clan leader to Natsuo. Sasuke actually values the Ichiha clan, and should care about the position of clan leader, right? But when Natsuo saw Sasuke visibly relieved after confirming that he would accept the position of clan leader, he understood. He probably feels guilty towards me. Atachi is Sasuke's older brother, yet he committed such great sins against the Ichiha clan. Although Sasuke now sees Atachi as an enemy, his guilt towards his clan has never diminished. The future Sasuke's excessive pursuit of power, in addition to his hatred towards Atachi, is also largely due to his shame towards his clan. The title of clan leader is precious to Sasuke, and carries a sense of adolescent mission to lead the Ichiha's revival. But because of this, after handing over this position, his guilt has eased a lot. The two chatted for a while and then separated. Sasuke began to practice frantically. Natsuo also didn't idle. He started organizing the Ichiha clan's inheritance. For greed nothing is sacred. If the phoenix bird fell into his hands, he would eat it or sell it. Many high-level ninjutsu scrolls were looted. Things like money were almost completely taken, and the training notes of the elite members of the Achiha clan, almost none remained. This clearly couldn't be the work of Achiha Atachi, but rather the means of a certain unnamed Hokage. Natsuo only glanced roughly, and didn't hesitate to put down his work, contacting the major ninja clans in Konoha as the new Achiha clan leader. First, he informed the major clans that the Achiha clan had a change in leadership. Second, it was to provide an official response to the events involving the Achiha clan. The major clans gave him enough respect, and even the third Hokage came as the Saratobi clan leader. As the new leader of the Achiha clan, Natsuo, in front of many clan leaders, deviated from the arrogant image of the Achiha clan and burst into tears in a devastated manner for his lost clansmen, causing vigilance and rejection of the Achihas to decrease among the main clans, which worried the third Hokage. Saratobi Hiruzen couldn't help but quietly chat with Sasuke, vaguely implying, did Natsuo force you to give up the position of clan leader? Do you want us from Kanoha to help you? But since Sasuke genuinely stepped down, nothing came out of it. How unfortunate, Saratobi Hiruzen thought to himself. It seems that some of the things confiscated for safekeeping by the village will have to be returned. Although Natsuo's talent was average and his strength was insufficient, he was still an adult and a chunin, so he had some understanding of the family's assets. If the Achiha representative was Sasuke, a seven-year-old child who was easily fooled, he would only leave behind a few useless ninja techniques, enough for Sasuke's livelihood, but not too much money. But when facing an adult, especially a chunin with a certain level of strength, he couldn't do that. The official statement was that Atachi secretly killed all the Achiha clan members. This was already quite forced. It wouldn't make sense for Atachi to kill everyone, and then leisurely search for money and ninja scrolls instead of running away immediately. That would be underestimating Kanoha too much. The major clans in Kanoha were already grieving, and the resentment was strong. If more incidents were to occur, it would not be resolved by small measures like Danzo being dismissed. So, the next day, Natsuo, who continued to clean up the inheritance, discovered that the homes of various Ichiha clan members, had gained a lot of cash, properties, shops as well as some high-level ninja scrolls and training notes. Of course, the third Hokage had most likely copied these ninja scrolls and training notes. But that was a minor matter. The third Hokage was still very generous in his actions. He returned almost all of the Achiha clan's assets intact, money, shops, stock certificates, etc. except for the ninja scrolls. In the third Hokage's mind, the most precious inheritance of the Achiha clan was the various ninja techniques that could make the Achiha clan dominate the Sengoku period. Since he had already obtained the best things for himself, he could be more generous in other aspects, so as to give outsiders the impression of fairness and justice in Kanoha. A few days later, 
Natsuo finally finished organizing the Achiha clan's inheritance, before he had a chance to reward himself with a drink and reflect on becoming a billionaire, something he didn't even dare to dream of in his previous life. He suddenly heard the sound of footsteps. He looked up and saw a graceful figure running towards him. Natsuo, the voice of that figure carried surprise and worry. She ran over, opened her arms, and tightly embraced Natsuo. Instantly a faint fragrance filled the air, and a soft feeling surged in his heart. Thank goodness, Natsuo, you're still alive. Yukino, why are you here? Natsuo looked at the girl in his arms with some confusion. She was Natsuo's former teammate, a beautiful civilian ninja. However, her talent was only average, and couldn't compare to the elite genin like Sakura and Rin. She was currently at the genin level. I heard you came back, that's great. I knew you wouldn't die. Yukino's eyes were moist as she tightly hugged Natsuo. She held him with all her strength, her palms gripping tightly, as if afraid that if she relaxed even a little, the person in front of her would fly away. As a ninja, Natsuo naturally had teammates he could rely on. However, when he planned to fake his death, he deliberately chose a time when one of his teammates was injured and went out alone on a mission. He successfully faked his death it was said that this example was even used by the third Hokage as a teaching material for the ninja academy, referred to as the consequence of a lone wolf. It's okay to feel sad. Now I'm back. Natsuo whispered softly, cry as much as you need. It's okay. I feel better now. Yukino's eyes were still red. She looked around at the silent base and the bloodstains that hadn't been cleaned up yet. I wanted to come earlier, but there were Ambu guarding outside your Uchiha clan, not letting me in. Natsuo, is it true that your Uchiha clan? Yukino hesitated. Yes, it's true. Natsuo nodded. Now, there are only two of us left in the Uchiha clan, me and Sasuke. Yukino's eye sockets instantly turned red again. She gently held Natsuo, as if afraid of hurting the person in her arms. Why are the heavens so unfair? You barely survived and came back to the village, and her voice was filled with heartache. Her delicate hand gently caressed Natsuo's back. Natsuo, it's okay, don't worry. The Achiha clan is one of the great clans in Kanoha. Kanoha will not let the Achiha clan be destroyed. Natsuo heard this and couldn't help, but his eyes twitched slightly. Girl, you probably don't know that Kanoha is about 99% responsible for the Achiha clan's extermination. If it weren't for my decisive action to ask the third Hokage to seal off the Achiha clan's residence when I came back, Saratobi Hiruzen, out of face-saving considerations, would have had to send people there. I estimate that the clan's assets and ninja scrolls would have been lost by now. And Yukino continued to comfort gently. The third Hokage won't just sit idly by. The major clans might also help. And I will help too. When she said the last sentence, Yukino's face blushed slightly, and her voice was very soft. If you didn't listen carefully, you might not even hear it. The two of them chatted for a while. Yukino couldn't help but ask about Natsuo's plans for the future. Natsuo didn't hold back and revealed his revival of Ichiha, starting with a harem plan. The revival of the Ichiha clan needed children. However, in the world of the Hokage, although there was no formal agreement, the default among ninjas was still monogamy. It was only the high-ranking nobles of the Fire Country who had multiple wives and concubines. His changes had to be publicized, so that the women of Kanoha would be aware of it and have the opportunity to seize it. Your Acheha clan does need new blood. Yukino blushed, but nodded without hesitation. This is for the clan. Natsuo, you have to work hard. Oh, by the way, you haven't been home for half a year, and there's a lot of dust accumulated there. I wanted to help you clean up before, but your clan members wouldn't let me in. Let me help you tidy up the house. Living in a clean house will improve your mood. With that, she rolled up her sleeves and started working with a smile. The time for the Ambu blockade was limited, so Natsuo naturally prioritized organizing important items, such as ninja scrolls and property deeds. As for the place to live, if it weren't for the fact that ninjas were accustomed to a harsh life, they might not be able to live there. The big cleaning began. It wasn't just Natsuo's room, but also the dark red blood stains on the ground. That had to be cleaned bit by bit. Before they knew it, it was already dark. Natsuo thought for a moment and said, you can stay here tonight. It's too late to go back to your place now. Don't worry, the bedding in the house is clean. Okay, Yukino blushed and nodded gently. That night, Natsuo had just laid down. A series of soft sounds rang out. Yukino gently pushed open the door and walked in. Yukino, what are you? Natsuo was momentarily stunned, then smiled helplessly. I need to rejuvenate the Achiha clan. Perhaps I can't be considered a qualified husband. I don't care, I don't want to just secretly watch you like before. Yukino's face was red, her whole body trembling slightly, like a frightened little rabbit, her voice filled with shyness. But her actions were decisive. And Natsuo, do you know? My friends say that a girl like me is the best to be a mother. Between the sheets, in perfect peace, the back and forth is synchronous. The movements slow but never cease, then rise with amorous violence. Yet closer still. The lust for love becomes sublime. One slides into the others fill the coming moments beyond time. The eyes roll back, 
The light caress has now dug in, moans interrupted by a smack of rhythmic impact skin and skin. In unison, the lover's gush of spirit meets, their finished glow beams like the sun. They lie alone where are the sheets. Early in the morning, the sun just rose. The two embraced, Natsuo looking at that young face with a hint of shyness, clear eyes filled with love, and a well-fed figure praised by her friends as good for being a mother. Several major battles happened overnight, and when we were a little tired, we confided in each other. Yukino's eyes were filled with tears as she began to remember. In the mission, it was Natsuo who skillfully defeated the enemy ninjas, and saved me when I was helpless. I was weak, despised by my teacher and teammates, but has generously taught me his ninjutsu. During the six months without any news from him, I regretted every day and night because I got injured before and couldn't go with him. Now, I won't hesitate anymore. At noon, the sun was scorching hot. Sasuke came over intending to inform Natsuo about his school matters, but he found Yukino sitting next to Natsuo with a shy expression. Her posture seemed a bit strange, occasionally showing a touch of painful affection between her eyebrows. Although Sasuke was still young, in the world of Naruto children mature quickly, and the ninja school did not shy away from teaching some adult topics. He immediately understood, and was greatly amazed. No wonder it's brother Natsuo, he has started the great cause of reviving the Achiha clan so quickly. Sasuke felt emotional, then as a family member, he carefully observed Yukino for a while. Although she seemed childish in the eyes of adults, she was very important in Ichiha Sasuke's heart. What do you think about polygamy? What are your thoughts on having children? Are you willing to contribute to the revival of the Ichiha clan? Yukino blushed but didn't hesitate to answer. And then great. This is the good wife of my Ichiha clan. Sasuke excitedly raised his thumb. Nice to meet you, sister-in-law. Sister-in-law, you have to work hard with brother Natsuo from now on. Yukino blushed and nodded. Did she finally gain the approval of her brother-in-law? Although this brother-in-law was a bit too young, Natsuo, of course, wouldn't neglect the etiquette towards his beloved. He quickly started preparing for the wedding. After marriage, his wife, now named Ichiha Yukino, became even more gentle, and their life became happier. It's unclear if her friend's comment about being the best choice to be a mother was too accurate. One and a half months later, Yukino became pregnant. Husband, it seems like I'm pregnant. Ha ha ha. Great. That's wonderful. Yukino, you've worked hard. Natsuo laughed heartily, while Yukino, listening, couldn't help but roll her eyes in a playful manner. Wasn't it laborious to toil day and night? Both of them were very happy. Of course, Sasuke was even happier. Do I have a new member of the Ichiha clan again? Sasuke's eyes welled up with tears, even more excited than Natsuo, who was about to become a father. Ignoring the objections of the two, he forcefully dragged Natsuo and Yukino to go shopping, buying a large number of maternity and baby products. Although Yukino didn't know whether to laugh or cry, because it was still too early for that, but he didn't care at all. Be prepared early, be at ease early. He even almost said today everything depends on him, the second young master. Yukino was speechless, but as she looked at Natsuo, who was asking her friend which obstetrician gynecologist at Kanova Hospital was the best, her heart was filled with sweetness. A large number of maternity and baby products, specially invited experts from Kanoha Hospital for checkups. Various delicacies suitable for pregnant women purchased at any cost, highlighting a wealthy appearance. However, after a while, the three of them were a bit tired. They were sitting in a dumpling shop taking a break when Natsuo suddenly looked up. Oh, Enko, you're here too. Natsuo, are you guys eating? A woman dressed in a mature and sexy standard fishnet undershirt but with a baby face, walked over. Mitarashi Anko, she is currently not a particularly high-ranking jonin, just a chunin in Kanoha, considered to be a student of the same generation as Natsuo. Yeah, we got tired from shopping, so we sat down to rest. Natsuo smiled. How about it? Do you want to come and try it too? Anko glanced at the table full of dumplings, and silently swallowed her saliva. This thing is her favorite. Sure. Anko accepted eagerly. The few of them chatted casually, but Natsuo couldn't help but glance at Anko a few more times. Anko seemed a bit poor. Looking at a ninja's economic situation, you can tell from their ninja tools like shuriken. Although Anko's shuriken can't be considered low quality, they are still ordinary and belong to the level that civilian ninjas like to use. And then look at this guy. Although you can't tell from her appearance, her chewing speed for the dumplings is much faster than an ordinary person, and soon there is a pile of bamboo skewers left. It's as if she hasn't eaten for a while. This shouldn't be. Natsuo thought to himself. The Mitarashi clan is a family clan in Kanoha. Although they are not very famous and their strength is average, and they have never produced a high-level expert, but they should still be okay. Anko is a Chunin, and with the support of her family, it's impossible no, it is possible. As a trusted ninja clan of Orochimaru, when Orochimaru defected, the Mitarashi clan naturally came under investigation by Kanoha. 
In all aspects, suppression and isolation were inevitable. Enko's situation when she was Orochimaru's disciple was as glorious as it was miserable now. Although she was innocent and not deliberately suppressed, don't expect the clan to give her any support. The Mitarashi clan was also afraid of being misunderstood by the high-level officials of Konoha and needed to avoid suspicion. Considering that Enko's main ninjutsu relies on the snakes from the Rochi cave, which have a huge appetite and consume a lot. With the income of a small chunin, she really has to save a bit. Of course, this situation is only temporary. As time goes by, the need to avoid suspicion will gradually diminish, and the clan's support will be restored. And Enko herself will be promoted to a special jonin, and in the future, she may even become the main examiner of the chunin exams. This means that she has been accepted by Kanoha at that time. Once Natsuo restored Enko's situation, he no longer cared. On the other hand, Yukino narrowed her beautiful eyes, looked at Natsuo, then looked at the beautiful and charming Anko, and couldn't help but ponder. When Anko left, Yukino suddenly spoke. What do you think of Anko? Although Yukino asked subtly, but Natsuo still understood her intentions at a glance. Natsuo didn't know what to think and was speechless for a moment. You just got pregnant and you're already looking for another woman for your husband. Yukino, however, confidently replied precisely because I am pregnant, I cannot be with you. So, for the revival of the Achiha clan, I should find a sister. Otherwise, wouldn't all this time be wasted? That would be such a shame. Truly an exceptional wife. What my sister-in-law said is absolutely right. Natsuo hadn't even spoken yet. But Sasuke excitedly gave a thumbs up. Truly worthy of being the wife of the Achiha clan. So reasonable, to be honest. I also think we can speed up the Achiha revival plan. Sasuke has actually wanted Natsuo to find more women for a long time. Just one wife, and we call it revival. It's just that during the honeymoon phase, Sasuke didn't want to say much. Later, when Yukino became pregnant, it became even harder for him to bring it up. Originally, he planned to wait a while, and if Natsuo didn't take action, Sasuke would bring it up. But he didn't expect Yukino to suggest it herself. Truly, she is my Echiha Sasuke's sister-in-law. I've decided on this sister-in-law. Then he turned his head and said to Natsuo, Brother Natsuo, actually, I also think that Miss Enko just now is not bad. Although she can't compare to sister-in-law Yukino, she's not far off. We don't expect her to get pregnant as quickly as my sister-in-law did in just a month and a half, but wouldn't two or three months be enough for results? Brother Natsuo, work hard, and our Ichiha clan will rise. You guys really dare to have bold thoughts. Natsuo was speechless, you are willing to consider anyone a target. Although Mitarashi Enko's current life is a bit difficult, her strength is not ordinary, and her talent is enough to be taken as a disciple by Orochimaru. Among the same aged people in Kanoha, she is in the top tier. From a position perspective, even if Enko is suppressed by Kanova Shinobi, she is still a tune-in, on par with Natsuo. Enko is also a genius, proud and arrogant. How could she willingly become a concubine? Sasuke thought for a moment, but couldn't come up with a way to persuade Enko. Yukino also furrowed her brows slightly. It can be seen that she has fully embraced the identity of the Lady of the Ichiha clan. After all, according to the village law, she already changed her name to Ichiha Yukino. Which is why it is natural for her, as a member of the Ichiha clan, to put the interests of the clan first and do everything possible for the revival of the Ichiha clan. The two of them racked their brains trying to come up with a solution. Natsuo coughed a few times on the side. To be honest, you don't need to worry too much. During this time, I've come up with a perfect solution but I haven't implemented it yet. Yukino and Sasuke, a perfect solution. Kanoha, Hokage's office. Sasuke took the lead, entering the Hokage's office with the proud posture unique to the Achiha clan. Natsuo and Yukino followed closely behind. Hokage-sama, our Achiha clan, wants to issue a mission. Sasuke's expression was solemn, with a hint of pride between his eyebrows, as he spoke word by word. For the revival of the Achiha clan, our Achiha clan has decided to recruit outstanding and physically healthy female ninjas on a long-term basis. We require that they be at least Chunin level, that they have a healthy body, that they be willing to have a child, that they have a kind temperament, and that they are willing to live with other women peacefully. As long as she is willing to give birth to a child for our Achiha clan, she will be rewarded with 10 million Ryu and a B-ranked ninjutsu scroll for each child. If the female ninja is a Jonin, she will be rewarded with 50 million Ryu and a scroll of A-ranked ninjutsu. If the female ninja is cage level, she will be rewarded with 300 million Ryu and a scroll of S-ranked ninjutsu. Oh, by the way, our Achiha clan also plans to employ a team of experienced medical personnel for childbirth to ensure the health of both mother and child and the normal development of the child. As he spoke, Natsuo slapped out a bank book, revealing a deposit of 500 million ro. His attitude was clear this was the down payment. Third Hokage. Question mark, question mark, question mark, secretary on the side. Question mark, question mark, question mark. After a while, 
Third Hokage Saratobi Hiruzen pinched the bridge of his nose. Sasuke, Natsuo what are you trying to do? Of course, it's for the revival of our Ichiha clan. Ichiha Sasuke said without hesitation, nowadays, the Ichiha clan is declining in population and weak in strength. That's a fact I have to admit. The revival of the Ichiha clan requires a large population to restore our Ichiha clan's glory. Brother Natsuo once said that the biggest difference between the strong and the weak is their way of thinking. Free love is too slow. The Ichiha clan needs a faster method. We will make the Ichiha great again. He had a serious expression with a touch of fanaticism on his face. This is the next strategy of the Ichiha clan. Use a large amount of money to form a harem, and thus be able to revive the Ichiha clan in the fastest way. This is Ichiha's expensive plan to increase the descendants of the clan. The ninjas can't save Ichiha, but having children can. Sasuke's eyes were filled with fanaticism, and his voice was full of Ichiha's unique paranoia. Anyone who saw Sasuke like this, regardless of the clan emblem behind him and the Ichiha's unique Sharingan, could clearly see that he was a pure-blooded Ichiha. The third Hokage opened his mouth but couldn't say anything for a while. Natsuo coughed. Lord Third Hokage, the revival of the clan by the former clan leader Fugaku was hindered halfway, and now the clan is about to disappear. The clan is exhausted, and this is indeed a critical moment for the survival. However, our Ichiha clan is a great family with great ambitions. We will not relent internally. Today, we want to revive the glory of our ancestors and have many dissidents to strengthen our clan. Natsuo rambled on, and then added a sentence in response to Sasuke's words. If the woman has a special bloodline limit, our Ichiha can offer more money. Cough, cough. The third Hokage coughed twice and said with a black line on his forehead, Natsuo, I understand your desire to revive the Ichiha, but as a ninja clan, you should not consider restoring the reputation of the Ichiha clan, and making the Ichiha name resonate in the entire ninja world. The third Hokage tried to persuade Natsuo to follow the path he had originally imagined for Sasuke. However, Natsuo didn't hesitate and said, No, Lord Third Hokage, I am well aware of my own talent. Even if it means seeking revenge for our clan, we may have to rely on Sasuke's growth. The only thing I can do is to continue the Ichiha bloodline. Before that, everything else is meaningless. Please allow our Ichiha clan to issue missions and strengthen our bloodline. He remained silent for a long time, and finally sighed softly, are you sure you want to do this? By using this method to strengthen the clan, your reputation will be completely ruined. At Sasuke's age, he obviously wouldn't be the target of mission execution. So, it could only be Natsuo who would take on this role. The mighty Ichiha, once known as the strongest clan in the ninja world, now had a clan leader who could only be a stud. Compared to my personal reputation, the clan is more important. Natsuo said without hesitation. Well then, as you wish. Thank you Lord Hokage. Natsuo, Sasuke, and the others left the Hokage building. Saratobi Hiruzen watched their figures and sighed softly. It's a pity. Judging from the looks of it, Natsuo doesn't plan to go out on missions anymore. The Ichiha clan's inheritance was quite substantial. As long as Natsuo, the only adult Ichiha, had a little accident while going out, Kinoha would have a way to gradually take control of those inheritances. In fact, if it weren't for the aftermath of the Ichiha clan's extermination not yet dissipating, would be worried about other major clans having ideas. Perhaps Natsuo would have been assassinated in the village long ago, but it's fine. The Ichiha clan is growing stronger, which is beneficial for Kinoha. The third Hokage, Saratobi Hiruzen, is well aware that the Ichiha used to be a major enemy of Kanoha. However, now that only a few Ichiha members remain, they are the most reliable Ichiha. As long as they are further indoctrinated, the future Ichiha clan members can be completely controlled. Therefore, Saratobi Hiruzen is making an effort to suppress his greed, and not look at the Ichiha clan's price list on the table. Damn it. The Ichiha clan is really wealthy. Even the lowest ranked Chunin can use this mission to extract a reward of 10 million Ryo from the Ichiha clan, along with a powerful rank ninjutsu. From working hard to getting pregnant, and then going through postpartum recovery. Assuming this mission requires a year of work, it's equivalent to a Chunin earning 10 million Ryo per year. 10 million Ryo even the lowest ranked S rank mission requires about a month of work for an elite Jonin team, but the reward is only 1 million Ryo, and it has to be divided among the team members. By this calculation, it's almost equivalent to a tuning continuously completing mid-level s rank missions throughout the year. Not to mention the additional rewards of valuable B-rank advanced ninjutsu. Moreover, the prices for Jonin and Cage-level female ninjas have doubled, and the rewards are astonishing. Damn it. After all these calculations, Saratobi Hiruzen is even considering arranging some female ninjas from the Saratobi clan. Cough, cough. The third Hokage coughed, interrupting his train of thought, and waved his hand at the female assistant next to him. Junko, put this mission quote on the mission list. However, the female assistant seemed absent-minded and dazed. Junko, Junko, Junko. The third Hokage raised his voice, and the female assistant, Junko, 
suddenly snapped out of it. Ah, yes, third Hokage Sama. She quickly started working, and after a while, she casually said, By the way, third Hokage Sama, the Jonin exams for this year are about to begin. When should we report the Jonin promotion exams? Oh, do you want to participate in the exams? The third Hokage smiled and felt that he should encourage his ambitious subordinate. It should be in three months. If you want to participate, you need to prepare well. Ah, it's that far away. Junko looked disappointed. It seems like I can only take missions as a tune-in. Otherwise, by the time three months pass, those other bitches will have already taken all the missions. Forget it, even if the price is a little lower than that of Jonin, I'll just take them first. Then she swayed her hips and walked off in high heels to post the mission report. The third Hokage looked bewildered at Junko's retreating figure. From bewilderment to embarrassment, and then from embarrassment to disbelief. My female assistant, she was actually poached by the Achiha. Kanoha Mission Hall, underneath a photo of Natsuo, looking extremely handsome, offering a generous reward. I, Ichiha Natsuo, inviting the female ninjas of Kanoha to help with the revival of the Ichiha clan due to the shortage of descendants. Requirements. Female, under 30 years old, physically healthy, no bad habits, beautiful and fertile. Preferably at least a tune-in level ninja. No limit on the number of participants. After the interview, upon completion of the pregnancy examination at Kanoha Hospital, Half of the commission will be paid, and the full payment will be made after the success of the task along with a high-level ninja scroll. This mission can be kept confidential, and after completion, there can be no further contact without affecting the family. You can also formally join my Achiha clan, get married and enjoy the treatment of a wife in addition to receiving the regular commissions without any impact. Detailed rewards, 10 million Ryo plus B rank ninjutsu scroll for Chunin. 50 million Ryo plus A rank ninjutsu scroll for Jonin, 300 million Ryo plus strength ninjutsu scroll for cage level. The reward will be doubled if they have twins, and if whoever accepts the task has a special bloodline or extraordinary talent, the reward will increase. Under the mission introduction, a large group of people looked confused. Everyone had a question mark on their faces. Their eyes seemed to have lost their luster, and their brains were stuck. But as time went on, what the hell? Is the Achiha clan serious? 10 million Ryo plus B rank ninjutsu for Chunin, 50 million Ryo plus A rank ninjutsu for Jonin, cage level experts, this is even more insane than picking up money for free. Not to mention marrying into a wealthy family, the Achiha clan is one of the top families in Kanoha. The entire mission hall exploded in an instant. Everyone's faces were filled with excitement. It's too exaggerated. Really too exaggerated. The lowest level Chunin level reward is comparable to a cage level expert executing an S rank mission. Not to mention marrying into a wealthy family. You should know that in this world where bloodline limits reign supreme, bloodlines do have different levels. The big families not only look down on civilian ninjas in terms of status, but they can also easily kill a large number of civilian ninjas in terms of strength. Just look at the 12 strongest, except for Sakura and Lee, all of them are from big families. And these two can keep up in the future, relying on the support of high-level ninjas. The Achiha clan, without a doubt, is the top noble clan in the ninja world. Although they are currently facing a disaster, but a noble family is a noble family. By marrying into it, one can directly become a noble in the eyes of others. Both oneself and future generations can receive unparalleled resources from the Achiha clan, as well as countless high-level ninjutsu and endless wealth. It can even influence the future of the entire family of the bride. The female ninjas were going crazy and flocked in. I want to sign up. Me. 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 I can bear children, just look at my body. It's obviously good for giving children. I also want to sign up. I am one of the most talented civilian ninjas. The child I give birth to will definitely not embarrass the Ichiha clan. Their fanatical appearance was even more ferocious than the aunties fighting for discounted groceries. Looking at the crazy appearance of these beautiful dream lovers, the male ninjas couldn't help but sarcastically say, Damn Ichiha, playing with such a high reward for having children. They're really embarrassing their ancestors. But the next second, this man was surrounded by a group of women who were eyeing him. What do you know? Natsuo is doing this for the Ichiha clan. That's right. The Achiha clan only has two members left. If he doesn't make an effort, won't the family be extinct? At a time like this, can't we be a little flexible? Who are you to criticize him? Even the female ninja spoke with conviction, saying, the Achiha clan is one of the major clans that founded Kanoha. Now they are facing the threat of extinction. As a Kanoha shinobi, I absolutely cannot ignore this. I'll take on this mission. The other women gave her looks that said, you have no shame. But she didn't hesitate and said, we can't let the contributors to the founding of Kanoha shed blood and tears. I'm doing this for Kanoha. I'll take on this mission too. The news of the Achiha clan's frenzy of taking wives spread throughout Kanoha in an instant. 
This guy really caused a big commotion. Mitarashi Anko looked at the mission report with a strange expression. As a classmate who was familiar with Natsuo, she naturally talked about his plans for the future during their meal together. Natsuo told him, what the Uchiha clan lacks the most is population. I still need to work harder. Looking at the bundles of baby supplies, Anko thought Natsuo meant that he would put in more effort with Yukino, taking care of the family. Who would have thought? But the reward for this mission is really tempting. Mitarashi Anko silently swallowed her saliva and touched the low-quality shuriken in her pouch. 10 million ryo is enough for her to not have to worry about expenses for a long time. She could eat a whole plate of dango, and even throw one away. Of course, she definitely wouldn't take on this mission. She hadn't reached that point yet. Kakashi looked at the mission briefing, his mouth twitching. I remember the Ichiha clan being a proud bunch. Is Natsuo an exception? If Obito had his audacity, he might have already won Rin. The major ninja clans of Kanoha had different reactions. The Inuzuka clan said, isn't it a bit too direct to just issue a mission like this? The Achiha clan is indeed a bit bold. The Nara clan said, in terms of efficiency, this is the best way to revive the Achiha clan. But the wording is too straightforward, it's not good. The biggest reaction came from the Hyuga clan. Hiyashi coldly snorted and said, even the esteemed Achiha clan has fallen. They actually use money to pave their way completely lacking the dignity of a prominent ninja family. But there were rumors circulating privately. The day before, Hiyashi had belittled the Achiha clan during an internal meeting, believing that the Achiha clan had completely declined. Truly classy women wouldn't accept this kind of mission. The number one prominent family in Kanoha is indeed my great Hyuga clan. As a result, the next day, a daughter of the branch house went to take on the mission. Fortunately, Hiyashi found out early and intercepted the mission application form before it was reviewed by the third Hokage, saving a Hyuga clan leader from embarrassment. The news continued to spread. A few days later, even the students at the Ninja Academy knew about it. Sasuke. Is your Achiha clan really going to look for wives? Little Sakura's eyes sparkled. What do you think of me? Although I'm still young, I believe I will definitely be a good wife in the future. Crazy implications. Sasuke glanced at Sakura and said, flat chest, small butt, average looks you're not worthy. Maybe when you grow up and become more voluptuous, there might be a chance. But even then, you'll have to be able to catch up with the other women. Little Sakura! Exclamation point, exclamation point. She took three steps back as if struck by lightning, with a face full of shock and grievance. I still have to catch up. Sasuke certainly didn't lie, although he didn't realize that little Sakura's target was not Natsuo, but himself. But Sasuke knew how many mission sign-up forms the Achiha clan received these days. When little Sakura grows up, she might really need to cut in line. That night, the Achiha clan held a meeting to discuss this issue. Sure enough, I was right to come back. Natsuo thought to himself. He risked his life to return to Kanoha, just to make use of the Achiha clan's legacy, right? And now, the Achiha can be described in one sentence we Achiha are only left with money. If you count the cash and bank deposits inherited, Natsuo has a total of 10 billion ryo in his hands. This is the accumulation of the Achiha clan for hundreds of years. Not to mention the large properties and shops that the Achiha still have in Kanoha, shares in major businesses, fire countries' mines, and the merchant caravans that travel between the five great nations. In addition to the accumulation of the Achiha clan during the Sengoku period, there is also the influence of the second Hokage's policies. He restricted the Achiha clan to the police force to prevent the Achiha from experiencing too much warfare and producing Manjaku wielders. But while there were political restrictions, there were also economic opportunities allowing every Achiha to live a prosperous life. Therefore, even though many older generation Achiha knew that the second Hokage was hostile towards them, and many orders contained elements of suppressing the Achiha, in the end, during the second Hokage's lifetime, no Achiha rebelled against Kanoa. Even people like Ichiha Kagami willingly fought and died for Kanoha. Today, Natsuo's inherited wealth mostly comes from the accumulation during the special policy period of the second Hokage. This gave him a solid foundation, allowing him to spend large sums of money without consequences. Come on, let's carefully choose which female shinobi will become the help for the revival of our Ichiha clan. Natsuo waved the mission application forms and smiled at Sasuke and Yukino. The three of them started selecting. Natsuo, what kind of woman do you want to choose? Yukino seemed very interested in this. Of course, it's high-value women from Kanoha. Sasuke nodded slightly, indicating his agreement. The three of them began their selection. First, they had to be beautiful, otherwise Natsuo wouldn't be interested. Secondly, they must be in good health. And then, their strength and talent should be good as it would affect the talent of their offspring. Although from a scientific perspective, women who have given birth once have a strong advantage in childbirth. Natsuo also has a unique appreciation for married women and young mothers. But considering the future, naturally, young girls are more suitable. After all, girls will eventually become young mothers. But young mothers will not become girls. Suddenly, Natsuo's hand paused as he flipped through the application forms. What's wrong, Natsuo? Yukino leaned over curiously. 
and glance at the list of female applicants. Yuzuki Yugo, is there something wrong with this woman? No, nothing, Natsuo smiled faintly. I just feel like I've seen this woman somewhere before. From her age, she seems to be my junior. Maybe she secretly admired you when you were in ninja school. Yukino teased. I remember you were quite popular back then. Natsuo smiled casually and didn't say much, but his eyes narrowed slightly. Although she was younger, looking at her purple long hair, her special jonin rank, and the introduction of her proficiency in swordsmanship below. It should be her. But Yuzuki Yugao is directly under the third Hokage's Anbu. Is this the third Hokage's arrangement? He thought to himself while casually putting the report form into the approved column. After careful consideration, five people were selected first, including the woman that Natsuo believed to be Yuzuki Yugao. All five expressed their willingness to marry within the Ichiha clan. After all, who would want to be just a silent tool for reproduction when they could marry within a prestigious family? Two of them were special jonin, and the other three were chunin. They were all civilian ninjas, without any special bloodline. Compared to those with bloodline limits, they were doing quite well. Under the influence of their prominent families, those women with special bloodlines had not yet stooped to participate in this mission. But Natsuo didn't lose out either. As a civilian ninja, becoming a chunin or higher-ranked ninja was already quite impressive. Although it wasn't as straightforward as having a bloodline limit, it still represented considerable talent. And so, the wedding ceremonies for the five people kept the scarce Ichiha clan busy. Although there were differences in their feelings, Natsuo claimed to treat them all fairly. They would have the ceremonies they were supposed to have. Keeping the women's feelings in mind, the wedding ceremonies were held separately, with at least two days in between. This made the women feel more comfortable. At least the groom didn't run off to another woman's bed on the second day of the marriage. Although Natsuo seems like a scumbag in his actions, he still treats us with some respect. Yuzuki Yuga sighed softly. The Naruto world was full of feudal remnants. In front of the prominent nobles, being a wife meant having a little bit of status, not a commodity that could be exchanged. Although female ninjas generally wouldn't fall to such a level, but Natsuo's actions made these girls feel a bit respected. Looking at his handsome face, an inexplicable feeling surged in their hearts. Love. Warmth. It seemed so, but they probably couldn't even understand their own thoughts. Just Hokage-sama. Yuzuki Yugao frowned recalling the conversation with the third Hokage before she accepted the mission. Yugao, the Achiha clan is making big moves easily attracting attention and causing trouble. Kanoha needs you to make sacrifices. But as an Anbu, we all have to make sacrifices, whether it's in terms of reputation or physically. Everything is for the sake of Kanoha. But, although there are only a few Achiha left precisely because of their scarcity, they need to be valued even more. I'm sending you there mainly to prevent others from targeting the Achiha. They are the bloodline of Kanoha's founders, and must stay in Kanoha. Hokage-sama, I, I know your sacrifice is significant, so Kanoha will compensate you. Consider it an s rank mission plus an advanced b rank ninjutsu. At the same time, your rank will be promoted from Chunin to Special Jonin. This is a great promotion for someone your age, although the third Hokage knew rationally that the slightly growing Ichiha clan, with only a few members left, would only benefit Kanoha and not pose a threat. His instinctual wariness of the Ichiha made him unable to resist the urge to place some spies. With only two Ichiha remaining, it was almost impossible for them to be turned, let alone steal any intelligence. But now, the Ichiha's desperate plea for offspring gave him an opportunity. Even with the help of spies, it's possible to gain control over the entire Ichiha legacy. Saratobi Hiruzen thought to himself, then took decisive action. After all, the Ichiha were the first prominent family of the Sengoku period. Saratobi Hiruzen believed that there must be hidden legacies that the Anbu had not discovered, but that only those with the Ichiha bloodline could find. As for the so-called other villagers targeting the Ichiha, well, naturally there was a possibility and a very high one at that. After all, capturing the two Uchiha meant integrating the entire Uchiha clan into their own village. Not to mention the formidable power of the Sharingan, just the fact that the family of Kanoha's founders joined another village would greatly undermine the beliefs of Kanoha Shinobi. However, if Kanoha wanted to protect the Uchiha, they didn't need to resort to such methods. The most important thing was surveillance. Of course, the third Hokage was not foolish. He selected the most loyal Anbu. And this Anbu couldn't have a lover, and their strength couldn't be too strong. A ninja who was too powerful would be a waste as a long-term spy. It would be best if they were also a civilian ninja, to prevent any trouble with their family coveting the Ichiha bloodline. In the end, he chose Yuzuki Yugao. Her strength happened to be on the edge of being a special jonin. The key point was that she was beautiful. The third Hokage thought that any man wouldn't miss the chance to choose a wife like her. And the reality was just as the third Hokage had thought. Yuzuki Yuga successfully entered the Achiha clan. However, Yuzuki Yuga opened her mouth. It was true that she didn't have a boyfriend yet. But that didn't mean that as a woman, she was willing to accept this type of mission. Although the third Hokage promised to immediately arrange a perfect new identity for her after completing the mission, ensuring that it wouldn't affect her reputation, there was still some resentment in her heart. But in the end, Yuzuki Yugao accepted the mission. 
It wasn't because she coveted wealth or promotion, but as an Anbu, she didn't have the qualification to refuse the orders from the Hokage. In the world of ninjas, this is not allowed. No matter how dissatisfied one may be, it must be suppressed. That's why when the wedding festivities were over, looking at the man next to her, there was still a hint of passion in his eyes when he looked at her. Yuzuki Yugao bit her lips slightly. The only thing I can be grateful for is the handsome appearance of my husband. This situation, perhaps not so bad Natsuo didn't choose too many wives at once. On one hand, it was because he had high standards and eliminated the largest number of ordinary female ninjas with the lowest level of skill. On the other hand, it was also because the female ninjas of Kinoha, who were still relatively simple, had some subconscious disbelief in this paying a large sum of money just to have a child behavior. Are there really people who would spend so much money just to have a child? Although 90% of the female ninjas of Kanoha were very envious, only a few could decisively take action. And even fewer were chosen by Natsuo. But Natsuo was not in a hurry. Having too many wives in a short period of time, would also be difficult to manage after all, he only has one pair of kidneys. The Achiha clan's integrity would gradually dispel their doubts. When the first batch of children were born and rewards were distributed, the female ninjas of Kanoha would be tempted. After gaining a group of high-quality women at the beginning, Natsuo would maintain the standard of selecting talented women as wives as much as possible. And then he began his nights of bliss as a newlywed groom. Over a month later, most of the women became pregnant one after another. And Yukino's belly grew visibly faster. A few more months passed. The bellies of Yugao and the other women grew larger, and a few newcomers also showed pregnancy signs. And Yukino entered the delivery room. Sasuke and Natsuo waited outside together. Inside the room, Kanoha's top medical team was at work. Finally the sound of a baby crying rang out. At the same time, Natsuo heard a voice in his ear. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 32, you have gained chakra plus one, fire release. Great fire annihilation. The baby has just been born. Natsuo's eyes lit up. In the next second, a powerful surge of chakra erupted from his body, instantly strengthening his limbs, and even making his heartbeat stronger. Although it was just a plus one, it felt like the newly added chakra was almost the same amount that Natsuo's own already possessed. Even though the Achiha clan couldn't compare to the Senju and Yuzumaki clans in terms of chakra amount, they were still a ninja clan with a large amount of chakra. This plus one is at almost the amount of chakra of an elite chunin. Natsuo thought to himself. At the same time, memories of the fire release. Great fire annihilation technique appeared in Natsuo's mind. The Achiha clan actually had a scroll of this ninjutsu, which detailed numerous esoteric knowledge including key points of training, collected over the years by members of the clan. However, the knowledge that appeared in Natsuo's mind at this moment was different. It was vivid and seemed to have truly experienced countless releases of ninjutsu. It even contained many techniques, timing of release, and methods to speed up hand seals when using the fire release. Great fire annihilation in battle. Natsuo believed that if he were to release this ninjutsu now, he would definitely be able to do it skillfully and completely master it. His strength had greatly increased, and this was just a child. Natsuo carefully looked at the system prompt. Comprehensive potential evaluation. So, it's not just about quantity, but also about quality. He said, it seems like I still need to work hard to find high quality female ninjas in Kanoha. Natsuo couldn't help but shift his gaze to Yugao and the others who were also pregnant. The Ichiha clan was welcoming a new member again. For a family with only two pure-blooded Ichiha members, this was a big deal. Sasuke came to see this baby every day after school, for a month without interruption. With a sense of guilt due to his brother destroying the Ichiha clan, he saw the new generation of Ichiha as if it were his own redemption. Every day, he bought a bunch of toys that the newborn couldn't even play with yet, as well as delicious food that the baby couldn't eat, taking care of his nephew, in a slightly childish but caring way. Natsuo felt that Sasuke's current appearance reminded him of the care Itachi gave him, when he looked after Sasuke. Considering the Achiha clan's tendency to have brother complexes and be obsessed with their siblings, although Sasuke didn't show any brother complex in the original work, that was because he didn't have a younger brother at all. But now well, okay. Natsuo looked at the seven-year-old Sasuke who was amusing the newborn baby. Although they were not much different in age when Atachi was taking care of Sasuke based on their seniority, maybe he should be called nephew obsessed. Ichiha residence. Meow, that's how it is, meow. A black and white kitten licked its paw and said, the mining area has been attacked three times this month and the miners have suffered losses, meow. Natsuo, what do you plan to do, meow? Another attack? Huh? Natsuo narrowed his eyes and said, it seems that some shinobi and nobles from the fire country can't hold back anymore. As the largest clan back in the day, the Achiha clan's assets were not limited to cash and properties in Kanoha. There were mines that produced materials for ninja tools, ninja tool shops scattered throughout the village, and businesses under the protection of the Achiha clan. Compared to mission rewards, these industries were the true financial sources for the Achiha clan. Other major clans were similar. 
For example, the Nara clan controlled half of the medicinal herb production bases in the Fire Country. The Yamanaka clan had access to 70% of the poison and fresh flower channels. And the Akamichi clan owned many large chain restaurants. How much money could they earn from missions alone? Of course, true major clans would not openly associate with a group of weak merchants. For example, the Achiha clan relied on the Nekamata clan, their staunch alliance to act as a front while secretly controlling these industries, gathering intelligence, and earning high profits. However, these industries were naturally stable when the Achiha clan was strong. But now that the Achiha clan was weakened, they naturally attracted countless wolves. They hired shinobi to attack the mines, ambush merchant caravans, and cause trouble in the shops. Various incidents kept occurring. In fact, if it weren't for the third Hokage's consideration of the Achiha clan's recent heavy losses, and not allowing the oppression of the Achiha clan while they were weakened, which would affect the unity of Konoha, these things would have happened long ago. Of course, Saratobi Hiruzen wasn't being kind-hearted either. Natsuo believed that during this time, he had also learned a lot about the Achiha clan's industries, and the Saratobi clan would soon quietly enter the scene, and become the biggest winner of this feast. Miao san with the Achiha clan's current strength it's impossible to protect these industries. Natsuo looked at the black and white cat in front of him and said frankly, let's hire Shinobi. But Natsuo, wouldn't that be equivalent to giving money to the village? Miao san frowned, and its soft and fluffy appearance made people want to pet it. What's the difference between that and drinking poison to quench thirst? It's like walking into a tiger's den, Miao. Most of the people who were itching for action now had some connection to the Shinobi of Kanoha village. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to find Shinobi who could attack well-guarded mines. By hiring Kanoha Shinobi, it thought Natsuo believed that those attackers would naturally disappear. But after the mission was over and some time passed, they would reappear. In the end, it was like cutting his own flesh to feed a tiger and drinking poison to quench thirst. However, Natsuo shook his head. Who said I wanted to hire Shinobi from the village? Miao-san, I believe in the loyalty of your Nekamata clan towards the Achiha clan, and I also believe in your underworld intelligence capabilities. Can you help me use your channels to contact Akatsuki? Suki. Natsuo's mouth called up. I want to hire Shinobi from Akatsuki to defend the Ichiha clan. Akatsuki. Flashes of light and shadows flickered. In the center, a man with Rinnegan opened his eyes and spoke in a deep voice. We have received a commission. The commission is for Akatsuki to kill all the ninja attacking the Sado mine, as well as the behind-the-scenes black market merchants and nobles. The reward is equivalent to three standard S-rank missions. Killing a few ninjas, along with some merchants and nobles, doesn't seem worth such a substantial reward, Sasori said in a hoarse, elderly voice. But this kind of small matter that anyone can handle shouldn't require the leader to gather all of us, right? Everyone's gaze turned towards the owner of the Rinnegan. Nagato didn't hide anything. The Sado mine is the Achiha clan's property. This is a commission from the Achiha clan. Recently, their property has been heavily harassed by some ninja, so they came to hire us. The Achiha clan. Everyone was stunned, then subconsciously looked towards Achiha Atachi beside them. Atachi's eyelids drooped slightly, and his pupils contracted imperceptibly. But his expression remained unchanged, as if it had nothing to do with him. Orochimaru licked his lips. Even the proud Achiha clan is asking for help. But he probably doesn't know that the culprit who caused the famous Achiha clan to fall into such a situation is right here in our organization Akatsuki. Others also laughed. The Achiha clan has always been proud and accustomed to solving their enemies with their own strength, which was well known during during the Sengoku period. Who would have thought that they would hand over their security to others? Not only that, but they also even came to us for help. This is really by the way. I heard that the only two remaining members of the Achiha clan have completely lost the Achiha's glory and started crazy polygamy, completely acting as studs. I heard that too. The former prestigious family of the ninja world has fallen to such a state. This makes one really mourn. He, don't say that. The current Achiha clan leader's plan is actually quite reliable. According to my intelligence, he recently had a child. The contribution of this child to the growth of the Achiha clan is much greater than what he, Amir Chunin, can achieve. Everyone laughed without any scruples. On the other hand, Nagato remained expressionless throughout, quietly looking at Itachi. Itachi, what do you think? Akatsuki is not yet the complete team of elites, still in the process of gathering funds, and lacking a large amount of capital. Normally, Akatsuki would not refuse a mission with such a huge reward and low difficulty. But this time, it's related to an Akatsuki member. It's not that he has any feelings for these people in Akatsuki. Except for Conan, he doesn't approve of the behavior of the other ninjas. But Itachi's value to his plan is obviously much higher than a meager reward. I have no objections, Atachi's voice remained as calm as ever. The Achiha clan is no longer worthy of my attention. Achiha is Achiha, and I am me. For the sake of our grand plan, I don't mind the organization's actions. Nagato nodded. Everyone is a ninja, there's no need for unnecessary fuss. Since Atachi says he doesn't mind, then he really doesn't mind. In that case, let's accept it. Nagato spoke up. Orochimaru, this mission is entrusted to you. I don't mind. Orochimaru smoked coldly. 
but I remember that Kikuzu is the one who loves missions with a lot of money, right? Oh, speaking of which, he didn't attend this gathering, did he? Is there something going on? As he spoke, he looked around to confirm that Kikuzu was indeed absent. Kikuzu's companion, Haiden, said carelessly, Nothing much, just a while ago when that guy Kikuzu found out about the high price the Achiha clan was offering for having a child, he couldn't help but take an extra look at Conan. Then, the leader beat him up badly, and he still can't get out of bed. Um, the expressions of the people instantly became strange. Everyone knows Kikuzu's personality. It's obvious that she was looking at Conan with that look of hers. He probably has some thoughts. Like packaging and sending Conan, a cage-level expert, he probably won't take action, but he definitely has thoughts. Even daring to have thoughts about the leader's teammate with the Rinnegan, Kakuzu is quite bold. Is he willing to give up his life for the money? All right, then I'll do it. Orochimaru smirked coldly. After all, I'm more familiar with the Land of Fire. But since the attacks were carried out by Shinobi, their traces have to be well hidden. It will be quite troublesome to investigate the culprit this time. Atachi, if you don't mind, would you like to accompany me? You're quite familiar with the Achiha clan's assets, aren't you? His snake-like tongue extended, and Orochimaru's eyes were filled with greed as he looked at Atachi. Atachi nodded slightly. His expression remained calm, as if he hadn't noticed Orochimaru's gaze at all. But in his heart, he sighed softly. Shall we, Atachi of course? Natsuo knew that Atachi was currently in the Akatsuki organization. And he understood even more that Atachi's actions against the Achiha were for the sake of Konoha. Or rather, he believed it was for the sake of Konoha. But regardless of his actions, if Atachi didn't feel any guilt in his heart, that would be a joke even in the original plot during the Fourth Great Ninja War, when he faced Jakushi Kabuto. He openly admitted his own failure, and regretted his hasty decision. Although it was still early for him to repent, his guilt in his heart would not disappear because of it. So don't even think that Atachi would let the Akatsuki refuse the Achiha clan's request. He would even strive to complete this mission as perfectly and thoroughly as possible. I hope Atachi can do it perfectly and intimidate those shinobi even more. Natsuo chuckled lightly. Then he looked behind him. During this time, some high-quality female shinobi had joined the Achiha family. Some of them were even pregnant, of course. What made Natsuo even happier was the women from this group, including Yugao, had given birth. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 27, you gain chakra plus one, wind release, pressure damage. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 41, you gain mental power plus two, fire release, ash power burning. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 38, you gain mental power plus one, lightning release, chakra mode. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 36, you gain chakra plus one, fire release, big flame bullet. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 71, you gain chakra plus five, fire release. Great Fire Annihilation Arrow. Five treasures in a row. Just as I thought, the stronger the child's talent, the higher the reward. Natsuo looked at the system prompt and thought to himself. The child with a comprehensive potential evaluation of 71 is the one born from Yugao. Obviously, as a young Anbu with high talent and qualifications who will appear in the future plot, she is the strongest among Natsuo's wives. The reward for one child is almost equivalent to the sum of the other four children. Not to mention Chakra, the fire style reward in the back, although it looks like a B-level ninjutsu. But its content is one level higher than other ninjutsu. It actually contains information about Chakra nature transformation. In other words, the true name of this reward should be Fire Release. Great Fire Annihilation Arrow, Nature Transformation Version. Indeed, high-quality women from Konoha are the most suitable to be the mothers of my children. Natsuo thought without hesitation, while feeling the changes in his body. He compared the data. There are many fire-style rewards in the rewards. Is it because the children I fathered have Achiha bloodline? Although Achiha clan members do have chakra attributes such as lightning and water, their main attribute is still fire. Perhaps the system's rewards are given based on the talent inclination of the children born. Then, the chakra slash mental power rewards in the previous rewards may also have this reason. However, there are too few samples, and the children have not grown up yet, so it is unknown what they will be like in the future. Natsuo can only silently keep it in mind and plan to see the growth of the children in the future. But compared to this matter, Natsuo looked at himself in the mirror, looking at the pair of three Tomo patterns in his pupils. My Sharingan has advanced. Natsuo originally had a double Tomo Sharingan, but now with the surge in mental power, he has obtained the three Tomo Sharingan that only Ichiha Jonin would have. In other words, these rewards helped him continue developing his Ichiha clan bloodline. Continue to work hard. With more rewards, maybe I can directly activate the Manjakyo Sharingan in the future. With Natsuo having children, the number of Ichiha clan members increased and Sasuke naturally became very happy. Even Yukino also smiled brightly as she looked at the children who were not born to her. It's really beneficial to transmigrate to the Naruto world. Natsuo looked at his harmonious harem and thought to himself. 
This situation of wives enjoying themselves together would never happen in his previous life. But the women in the Naruto world do not reject the idea of their husband taking other wives. After all, who among the high-ranking officials and nobles of the Fire Country doesn't have a group of wives and concubines? Of course, Yukino is a minority when it comes to being willing to find other wives for her husband. Natsuo, by asking in a roundabout way, discovered that the reason Yukino developed this mentality seems to be because of her mother. Yukino's mother was an ordinary genin, but she was very eager to become a noblewoman of the ninja clan. Unfortunately, she had average looks and talent, and in the end she only married an ordinary man. But she was a snob ninja. She instilled the aristocratic spirit of the noble clan in Yukino from an early age, saying that a woman from the noble clan is relegated to the category of wife and mother, while at the same time, she was required to meet ideals of beauty, virtue, and obedience. Furthermore, because her status provides them with many comforts, it is her obligation to marry for the benefit of the ninja clan, either to form alliances or for the continuation of the bloodline. Under various forms of brainwashing, although Yukino did not become a snob ninja like her, she seemed to have developed a subconscious belief that for the sake of the clan, both male and female shinobi should make sacrifices. Therefore, it was only natural for her to accept other women serving her husband and raising his children for the sake of the Ichiha clan. If you love him, you should support him. Similar thoughts filled Yukino's mind. In response to this, Natsuo could only say, well done, mother-in-law. The impact of Natsuo having a child was not limited to the Ichiha clan. It had a significant influence in Kinoha, and even throughout the entire shinobi world. The reason was simple. As soon as the child was born, Natsuo paid the reward. 10 million Ryo in cash had already been received. e rank ninjutsu was also available in the ninja library for anyone to choose. Except for Yugao, the other Kinoichis couldn't help but show happy smiles. And after just giving birth, they went back to their parents' homes to show off their rewards. Suddenly, people became envious. This mission is actually for real. 10 million Ryo, such easy money. Damn it. I almost signed up. Why did I hesitate? The Achiha clan truly deserves to be the wealthy clan of Kinoha. The Kinoichis of Kinoha went crazy. Initially, there was some hesitation because it was the first time such a mission appeared. But now that successful participants had emerged, what was there to worry about? Charge ahead. Go and accept the mission. Marry into the Echiha clan and become a wealthy lady. This became their slogan. For a while, Natsuo received many mission applications. And for the Kinoichis from outside of Kinoha, the impact was even greater. As the most prosperous village, the income of the Kinoichis in Kinoha was already considerable, let alone outsiders. However, the highly paid mission of having children of the Achiha clan was only available in Kanoha, and people from other villages couldn't receive it. But that didn't mean people from other villages wouldn't take action. I didn't expect the Achiha clan to actually be serious. Send us spies to retrieve the Achiha bloodline. Cloud Shinobi Village, Rock Shinobi Village, San Shinobi Village, and others were all envious. That was the bloodline of the strongest Shinobi clan. They originally thought this mission was not reliable, perhaps just a deception, so they didn't dare to let their valuable spies in Kanoha do something that would increase their exposure. But now, those Kinoichis who had given birth could return to their parents' homes. In the past, Cloud Shinobi Village played war and extortion for the sake of Byakugan. Now, for the more prestigious Sharingan, what was the risk of gambling a spy's life? Everything is for the village. For a while, Kanoha Village was in turmoil, with underground currents surging. Nowadays, the Achiha clan is no longer deserted like before, in addition to the hired servants of the common people and the newborn babies and young Sasuk. Everyone else is a ninja, without exception. In fact, even eight-year-old Sasuke is very observant. So, they all sensed this undercurrent. As they walked in the Achiha residence, they could feel some people casting inexplicable glances at them. Whether it was envy, jealousy, or greed, they didn't know. But Natsuo remained unfazed and continued with the Kanoha high-quality Kinoichi selection plan. Even the spy, Yuzuki Yugao, could smell the scent of a fellow spy from those candidates. She couldn't help but ask, Natsuo, is it really okay for the Achiha clan to be so conspicuous in recruiting Kinochis? Don't we have to worry about spies from other villages infiltrating? We must be very careful with spies as she said this, Yuzuki Yuga blushed, because fundamentally, she herself was also a member of the spy category. Of course, there's no need to worry. Natsuo laughed heartily. You're overthinking it. Our Achiha family is warm and harmonious. How could there be spies? Spies also carry out missions. And how much money does an s rank mission pay? Which villagers spy can receive a higher reward than what the Achiha clan offers? Natsuo scoffed at this. Spies. Even the wealthiest village, Kanoha, can't offer much money. Yuzuki Yuga opened her mouth, but couldn't find anything to say for a moment. Although all the major villagers brainwashed their ninjas with phrases like love for the village, friendship, and loyalty, the fundamental reason for ninjas to carry out missions is to make a living to receive rewards. As the leader of the richest village in the ninja world, the third Hokage definitely didn't offer a low price for her spy activities. Just a little sacrifice from a female ninja 
could earn her rewards comparable to an s rank mission, advanced B-rank ninjutsu, and promises of promotion afterward. But compared to what the Ichiha clan offers, it's not even worth mentioning. Initially, she was even specially promoted to special jonin by the third Hokage to take advantage of the Ichiha clan. Although being a special jonin couldn't be completely regarded as a jonin, when combined with her young age and high talent, the rewards offered by the Ichiha clan were calculated as jonin level. The rewards for 10 s rank missions, the option to choose one advanced A-rank ninjutsu, continuous supply of nutrition supplements during pregnancy, and year-round servant services. Apart from not being able to help with promotions, the price offered by the Ichiha clan is almost 10 times the standard reward set by the third Hokage. So, who would be bored enough to become a female spy? Natsuo laughed heartily, pulling Yuzuki Yugao into his embrace. Even Yuzuki Yugao herself, when she spoke, subconsciously spoke as if she were the lady of the Ichiha clan. It wasn't a disguise as a spy, but instinct. Besides, it doesn't matter even if they are spies. Natsuo whispered in Yuzuki Yugao's ear, as long as she can bear children for the Ichiha clan, she is a good woman. As long as there are no fundamental issues that harm the Ichiha clan, any minor problems are not problems at all. Even if she really is a spy, I still still consider her my wife. Yuzuki Yugao listened this and felt her body go weak, but for some reason, she felt relieved in her heart. The two figures gradually merged Natsuo didn't believe that there were any female spies in the Ichiha clan. What could a spy gain from betraying the Ichiha clan? The Ichiha clan is currently scarce in population, with an astonishingly high average resource per person, surpassing even some prominent clans legitimate heirs. Why did you betray the Ichiha clan? For your own family. But you came here to have a child. Soon there will be a child connected to your bloodline here. If you love your family so much, aren't your children your family too? So, this is a contradiction. Those who betray for money, the Ichiha offers more. Those who betray for love, the Ichiha has her children. Regardless of whether you are a spy, in the end, you will only contribute to the Ichiha clan. Even Natsuo hopes they will send more spies. Look at Yuga. The child she gave birth to is much more talented than others' children. Spies often need to have an important hidden advantage that others don't know about, so their skills are much better than what they show. Isn't this a big profit? Of course, including the third Hokage, the leaders of the major ninja villages, have not yet realized this. They think they have offered high salaries to spies. But they don't realize that the Ichiha clan offers more. Land of fire, in a dark corridor. Natsuo, you've caused quite a stir. Ichiha Itachi sighed lightly, his eyes filled with complexity. He was actually quite familiar with Natsuo. This ordinary chunin, at one point, suddenly talked to him eagerly about the meaning of the clan, the untrustworthiness of politicians, the need to look beyond the surface, the deeper reasons behind many things that you thought you knew, and not to act impulsively, as you would regret it in the future. At the time, Atachi thought that Natsuo was brainwashed by the clan, and wanted to brainwash him into someone who only loved the clan and not Kanoha. So he sneered at him. But now, combining his own experiences, he somewhat understood the meaning behind Natsuo's words back then. Of course, Atachi didn't think that Natsuo saw through him at the time, but rather that he was worried that he would be influenced by the third Hokage. After all, the matter of him becoming a spy wasn't too secretive. But he had to admit, Atachi regretted it a little. But it was too late for regrets now. Atachi didn't plan to and couldn't change the outcome. But even so, I can still contribute a little consider it as payment for taking care of Sasuke. Atachi sighed lightly. The Ichiha clan's wealth is exposed, and the rumors are too strong. It will definitely attract some people's attention, and it may even affect Sasuke. So now, he wants to stop these people's hands and warn certain greedy eyes. Atachi walks slowly, alone, but with a sharp edge. Not long ago, when he teamed up with Orochimaru, suddenly attacked him. But as expected, Orochimaru was killed in self-defense. Now, I don't need to deliberately avoid teammates. It's more convenient to take action. The Hidden Leaf Village is riotous. Many clans and high-ranking officials of the Ninja Village are salivating as they look at the Ichiha. There is no way around it. Natsuo has been lavishly spending money, bringing both the passion of high-quality kinoichis from Kanoha and the attention of countless others. In fact, there are many wealthy families like the Ichiha clan, but as ninjas, why would they be so ostentatious with their money? It immediately caught the attention of countless people. Coupled with the current situation of the Ichiha clan, it is like a child walking through a bustling market with a gold nugget. Danzo was tempted. Money, in many cases, is powerless. For example, the Ichiha clan's wealth cannot buy back the lives of their clan members, and Kanoha's wealth cannot withstand Nagato's fist attacks. But in many cases, money is powerful. By obtaining the Ichiha clan's wealth, Danzo can easily expand his own roots. With increased strength, power naturally rises. Not to mention Danzo, even Saratobi Hiruzen was tempted. If it weren't for the concern about the reactions of the major clans within the village, he would have already taken action when the Ichiha clan was annihilated. Or rather, if Natsuo hadn't handled it properly, 
he would have already taken action. And now, a year has passed and the fear of the major clans has gradually diminished. They can now take action. And when Saratobi Hiruzen couldn't help but order the Saratobi clan to start moving, suddenly, a piece of news reached Kanoha. In the capital of the Fire Country, three noble families with a hundred years of heritage were wiped out overnight. Seven wealthy merchant families with considerable influence were all exterminated. The ninja sent by the major clans to target the Achiha clan's assets all disappeared without a trace. Among them were high-level Jonin. In an instant, the owners of all the greedy gazers were shocked. Hastily retracting their reaching hands and looking at the Achiha clan with a hint of fear in their eyes. This is indeed one of the great families that survived the Sengoku period. Even in their current state, they still have the ability to reach this level. Ichiha clan is so terrifying. Saratobi Hiruzen and Danzo understood in their hearts. It must be the work of Itachi. Saratobi thought to himself, he still can't let go of the Ichiha clan. Danzo's eyes were filled with fear. Itachi, is this the power of the Manjekyo Sharingan? Those noble families and wealthy merchants all had powerful guards. Itachi's intimidation was successful. Many ninja clans, including Danzo, restrained themselves. While many people desired money, they valued their lives more. Of course, except for Kikuzu, top-level experts and major clans don't care too much about money. Even Orochimaru didn't pay much attention to it. Killing a few people was nothing to him. The biggest problem was probably the reaction of Akatsuki. Atachi, you have caused quite a stir. Biwa Juzo couldn't help but look at him with a strange gaze. Indeed. Nagata remained calm. You have killed too many people this time. It wouldn't be difficult for some capable ninja clans to find out that it was us Akatsuki. The power we have exposed is too strong and will arouse the suspicion of others. That's not my problem. Atachi's expression remained calm, on par with the dead puppet Yuhiko. It was Orochimaru's doing. Orochimaru. Everyone was stunned. Yes. Atachi nodded. After he fell to ambush me. He might have been worried that you, the leader, would come after him. When I arrived at the target location, Orochimaru had already killed them all. Perhaps he wanted to exchange this way for Akatsuki's forgiveness. As for why he killed so many it's probably because he was in a hurry and wanted to beat me, who was familiar with the Ichiha industry. So, he would rather kill a thousand by mistake, then let one go. It's also possible that he wanted to expose Akatsuki and attract others to attack in order to avoid our pursuit. I don't know the specific reason. In any case, it's Orochimaru's problem. It has nothing to do with me, Ichiha Atachi. If you have any questions, I suggest you go ask him directly. The others thought Atachi was deceiving them, but there was no evidence. Ichiha Atachi remained expressionless. Although this incident increased the risk of his exposure, when he made the agreement with Abito to join Akatsuki, in exchange for not attacking Kanoha, the other party already understood that he was likely a spy for Kanoha. In fact, with Itachi's intelligence, he never uncovered any important secrets until his death. It shows that this spy doesn't have much significance. Now, even if there are more suspicions, it doesn't matter. Well, let's just assume it was Orochimaru. Nagato finally ended the topic and continued, In any case, your employer is very satisfied with this mission. At the same time, there is an additional mission to hire skilled members of Akatsuki to protect the Achiha clan's members. This is a long-term guarding mission, calculated based on the payment for 3S rank missions per month. Again, the expressions of the others instantly became strange. Even Atachi's expression changed slightly. Nagato remained expressionless and continued, Who among you is willing to go? I am. A slightly weak but determined voice rang out. Everyone looked in the direction of the voice. Oh, it's Kakuzu, old man. I knew you wouldn't miss out on a well-paying mission like this. By the way, Kakuzu, why did you change your appearance like this? The expressions of the others gradually became strange. Everyone else was standing, but Kakuzu seemed to be lying on the ground like a pile of mud. Why maintain this posture? Didn't the injuries inflicted by the leader heal already? Oh, it's like this. Kakuzu's considerate teammate, Hayden, laughed actually. This time, Ichiha contacted Akatsuki through Kakuzu. Ichiha wanted to add a mission to capture a cage-level female ninja, and offered a billion ryo for a cage-level female ninja who can bear children. So Kakuzu couldn't help but take another look at Conan. Anyway, now he's collapsed on the bed again and can't get up. Everyone. Well, the old man is really the old man. But there's no need to attend a meeting with injuries. Akatsuki shouldn't oppress its employees like this, right? If I don't attend the meeting, will I still have a share in this mission? Kakuzu's gaze was intense, his voice resolute. Leader. I want to participate in this mission. I didn't get anything from the last mission, so this time, don't even think about competing with me. Whoever dares to compete, I'll kill them. Even though he was seriously injured and lying on the bed, Kakuzu still raised his arm in a trembling but unwavering manner. Like an elementary school student raising their hand to answer a question, his expression full of seriousness. Everyone, in any case, for the next period of time, I will be responsible for protecting you. Kakuzu's voice was deep, giving off a very reliable feeling. Although he had just been beaten by Nagato, Kikuzu's ability to regenerate allowed him to appear healthy in front of his employer. Hiring Akatsuki as a bodyguard was something Natsuo had considered for a long time. 
After all, in this world, the shinobi of the five great nations have always been synonymous with high quality and high prices. Even Kakuzu welcomed the cheat's abuser, simply because the shinobi of the five great nations were too expensive. As a big businessman, he felt the pain in his wallet. And Akatsuki was both good and cheap, even Loki chose to hire Akatsuki. As the Tsuchikage, he couldn't possibly not know that allocating military funds to hire Akatsuki would affect the village's own military development. But he still did it, because Akatsuki was really cheap. For the same S rank mission, Akatsuki's reward was only about half of what they would offer the shinobi of the five great nations. And they worked diligently and never discarded their work. Although Itachi had severely intimidated those large ninja clans, the Uchiha clan's actual strength had indeed declined. Some medium-sized ninja clans who couldn't see the cause and effect of the Uchiha clan massacre, and who didn't pursue wealth but desired the Uchiha bloodline, still hadn't given up. The Uchiha clan needs sufficient protection forces. However, Natsuo shook his head and corrected, not to protect me but to protect my children. After several rewards, Natsuo's strength had surpassed that of an ordinary jonin, and Sasuke, under the agreement of Itachi and the third Hokage, had specialized ambu protection. His wives were also skilled kinoichis. It was the weak newborns who needed protection. Kakuzu frowned, if everyone is together, I can accomplish the task, otherwise, there are too many Ichiha children, and I alone am not enough to take care of so many people. Natsuo nodded, that's possible. The two discussed the details, such as the specific guarding plan, where the traps could be set, and the method of payment. After the discussion, Kakuzu finally nodded in satisfaction. The Ichiha clan was indeed a rich clan, it's a shame they don't have more tasks to issue. Oh, by the way, Kakuzu coughed and his voice was filled with regret regarding your other request. Akatsuki has decided not to take on that mission. I'm sorry. The other request was the mission to find a cage-level female shinobi. Of course, it wasn't that Akatsuki couldn't handle a cage-level female shinobi, but there weren't many skilled female shinobi to begin with, and cage-level female shinobi were very rarer. Currently, there were probably only a few, such as Yuji Donai, Terumi Mei, and Conan. The Jinchuriki were also Akatsuki's targets and couldn't be sold. The influence of a village leader was too great, so they couldn't act. That left only Conan. It wasn't that Kakuzu didn't want to take on the mission, but he couldn't find anyone to target. He explained the problems involved and then reluctantly said to Natsuo, if you find a target that can be targeted, you can contact me. I'll give you a discount. Natsuo was still working hard. As news of the Achiha clan's trustworthiness spread, the Kinochis in the village became even more excited, and began submitting their resumes one after another. However, Natsuo didn't recruit people on a large scale. As the number of options increased, Natsuo's standards also became higher. Ordinary Chunin were already finding it difficult to catch Natsuo's eye. He is just one person, so naturally we must be careful with resources. Not to mention that the wives who have previously given birth have gradually recovered their health, and are once again in a state of preparing for pregnancy, able to withstand the rain and dew. For example, the first to give birth, Yukino, is pregnant again. At the same time, the wives who entered after Yuzuki Yugao have also started to give birth gradually. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 42, you gain chakra plus two, Majin. Kite and Chitin Sharingan technique. Similar rewards keep coming but no child has been born who surpasses the first child of Yuzuki Yugo. Today, Natsuo is out shopping with his wives. Husband, I want to eat this. Sister, how does this dress look on me? Does it suit me? Darling, can you buy me a bouquet of flowers? What should I pay attention to during pregnancy? Should we prepare the baby's clothes in advance? The wives chatter, their faces full of smiles, occasionally touching their gradually growing bellies, their faces filled with maternal smiles. Natsuo also replies with a smile, taking care of each and every one of them. Yuzuki Yuga pouts and whispers. He really knows how to put on a show, but her eyes are filled with complexity. Wives, in the presence of some nobles, are nothing more than objects of release. But Natsuo treats each and every one of them like a boyfriend in love, making them feel very safe. Even, Yuzuki Yuga gently touches her own belly. Last time during her period, Natsuo actually helped her gently massage her belly, heated water, and prepared a hot water bottle. What's the difference between this and having a boyfriend? Of course, now Yuzuki Yugao is pregnant again, so she doesn't have to worry about her period anymore. Passing by a meatball shop. Oh, Kakashi. Anko. Yui Koronai. Guy. Natsuo paused and then walked in with a smile. Anko also saw Natsuo and waved, Natsuo, come and eat with us. Sure. Natsuo smiled and said to the women behind him, let's go inside and sit. The women also walked in one after another, making the already small shop feel crowded. Some of them ordered a large milk tea and shared it with each other. Some giggled and leaned against Natsuo, acting spoiled, and saying they wanted to drink iced milk tea. Some picked up food and fed it to him. Harmonious to the extreme. Meanwhile, Kakashi, Yui Kurunai, Anko, and other single people watched on the side with a helpless expression. This guy is like a walking bag of hormones. 
Kakashi sighed. My guy's eyes widened in shock. Does Natsuo not understand that God gave men powerful hands? So that we can be self-reliant and find food, not wait for women to feed us. A person who doesn't even know how to eat. What's the difference between him and a salted fish? Mike Guy is jealous. Natsuo accompanied his wives and chatted with Enko. Among those present Yuhi Kuronai and Mike Guy were Natsuo's former classmates, although they were in different grades and had limited interaction. They basically only knew each other's names. They were just casually gathering during their free time. The reason Enko called Natsuo by his name was mainly because it treated her to a lot of meatballs. Compared to these ninjas who frequently went on missions, Natsuo had more free time. He would often take his wives out for a stroll in Kanoha, and would always encounter Enko, who was poor, but still had a craving for food. And every time, Yukino would take the initiative to treat Enko to her favorite meatballs. Yukino seemed to have not given up on Enko as a target, but her actions became more subtle. Upon seeing Enko, Yukino's enthusiasm instantly ignited. On the other hand, Natsuo glanced at Mike Guy. Morning Peacock, Afternoon Tiger, Night Guy. First there was Guy, then there was Heaven, eight gates open to kick immortals. Under the six paths, I am invincible, above the six paths, one exchange after another. These verses were all evaluations of this man with a strong personality. However, Natsuo only chatted with him briefly, and didn't show much concern. Although Mike Guy was definitely the strongest in the world today, but I'm just a harmless a Jehoposidon. Why would he go all out and open the eight gates to target me? Right. So Natsuo continued to indulge with his wives. One wife acted coquettishly, another wife gave a kiss and there was even a wife who took the initiative to feed him. He had the demeanor of a feudal landlord's young master, enjoying great happiness. Kakashi and the others felt like they were being force-fed a bunch of dog food, finding it hard to swallow, and their livers were aching, not to mention the men. Even Yui Kurenai, a woman, couldn't stand it. It's not that I couldn't stand the signs of affection, but Natsuo, Yui Kurenai couldn't help but say, who goes out with a bunch of women like you. Ichiha clan's high price for offspring naturally attracted a large number of female admirers. But there were also many strong-willed women like Yui Kurenai, who felt that Natsuo was objectifying women and mocking them. Can't you just bring one person each time? Yui Kurenai blurted out, Don't you think this is disrespectful to the women around you? Yukino and the other women frowned and about to speak up. But Natsuo chuckled lightly, No, Kurenai, you're wrong. I am respecting them. Is this respect? Yuhi Kurenai felt like she was going to laugh out of anger. You already have several wives, and you still have the audacity to claim to respect women. Of course, it's respect. Natsuo said seriously, I have never forced any woman. When I went out this time, I specifically asked each and every one of them inquired about their opinions. When I married them, I never forced anyone even when it comes to trying new positions in bed. I always ask if they're willing. Of course, as Natsuo's experience gradually grew and his techniques became more sophisticated, no woman has ever rejected. I believe that respecting women means respecting their choices. Natsuo said seriously, I never force them to do anything they don't want to do. I have asked for their opinions on everything that concerns them. Even someone who just entered the Achiha clan regretted it as soon as they stepped through my door, and I politely sent them off. This is indeed true. Some people were envious of the rewards of the Ichiha clan, but regretted it on the second day of their marriage. Natsuo didn't mind anyway. It was like he had freeloaded once, so he didn't lose out. I think in Kanoha, perhaps there aren't many people who respect women more than me, Natsuo smiled. Of course, you all understand the current situation of the Ichiha clan. There are some things I can't compromise on, so I can only find women who are willing to accept me. Yuhi Kurenai opened her mouth, but for a moment, she didn't know what to say. As the daughter of a ninja clan, she understood that continuing the family was the responsibility of every clan ninja. And the essence of the fire country was also a feudal society with male dominance. From this perspective, Natsuo, who had many wives, was actually a rare man who respected women. In the end, this gathering ended with a somewhat unpleasant feeling. Anko blamed Yuhi Kurenai a bit, feeling that she had lost points with Natsuo, and lamented for his numerous treats. Kakashi and Mike Guy tried to mediate, but the two women still argued a few times. Yuhi Kurenai walked alone on the street with a bit of frustration. At this moment, Asuma caught up. Kurenai, you're here? Asuma with a big mustache saw her and immediately smiled. It's great to see you. By the way, I got two movie tickets. Let's go watch together. Oh, right. I heard you and Kikashi met Ichiha Natsuo. That guy who gave up on being a ninja and became a stud, you should avoid him in the future. Upon hearing this, Yuhi Kurenai froze on the spot. She knew that Asuma liked her. She was also considering whether or not to spend more time with him and get to know him better. But we just finished the meeting and he already found out that I had seen Natsuo. Is he monitoring me? Yuhi Kurenai suddenly remembered Natsuo's words. So, who really doesn't respect women? Asuma, on the other hand, didn't notice anything wrong with his words. He looked at the stunned Kurenai, raised an eyebrow, and reached out to hold her hand. However, smack, 
Yui Kurunai forcefully shook off Asuma's hand. Natsuo didn't care at all about the matter with Yui Kurunai. Ichiha clan's heavy investment in seeking a child naturally attracted countless women's cheers, but it also inevitably faced criticism. Yuhi Kurunai had considerable strength, talent, and a wealthy, so she naturally didn't like this kind of openly priced approach. Compared to Yuhi Kurunai, some men were even more intolerant of Ichiha. Kakashi and Mike Guy's jealousy could be considered extremely mild emotions. After all, Natsuo frequently flaunted his wealth, and occasionally paraded around with a group of girls. Not to mention that his wives they possessed both strength and beauty, making them outstanding among the female ninjas of Kanoha. They had countless pursuers. So, the mentality of some male ninjas in Kanoha was unstable. Let me put it this way. It can be said that Natsuo felt that as long as he ran to the streets of Kanohu village and shouted, I am Ichiha Natsuo. If you're my brother, come and fight me he would instantly gain many half-siblings. But today was a bit different. Sasuke hasn't come home yet. Natsuo squinted his eyes. After all, Sasuke was still young, and currently, the custody was with Natsuo. Although he still lived in his own house every day, he ate at Natsuo's place. And now it was getting dark, but Sasuke still hadn't appeared. Let's go find him, Natsuo sighed lightly. After all, Itachi was still working for Achiha clan in disguise, and he was currently the only one who could support Achiha's face. Some harmony between brothers and friends had to be maintained. Kinoha had several training grounds. Natsuo searched for a long time, and finally found that familiar figure desperately pounding a wooden stake in a training ground near the corner. What's wrong? Why haven't you come home for dinner, huh? What happened to you? Natsuo narrowed his eyes slightly. At this moment, Sasuke had some bruises on his face, his clothes were torn in some places, and there was even a deep footprint on his abdomen. Did you win? Natsuo glanced at Sasuke and calmly asked. I didn't lose. Sasuke bit his lip, but I didn't win either. There was a hint of unwillingness in his eyes, and he clenched his teeth tightly. Sasuke didn't try to make excuses because he knew he couldn't deceive a member of the Ichiha clan. It seems like you suffered a little setback. Natsuo thought to himself, people of the same age can't defeat Sasuke, so it must have been someone from a higher grade who took action. At this time, before Naruto became overpowered, Sasuke was undoubtedly the number one. So it could only be someone from a higher grade. It's okay, just come back and win next time, Natsuo said calmly. Question, what should I do if I'm bullied by classmates? Momochi's abuser. At times like this, just kill all your classmates. Ninjas themselves are killers, and students at the ninja school are also reserve warriors. It's normal to have conflicts and use physical force. A little bit of struggle can even stimulate students' motivation to improve. So as long as it doesn't cause major problems, no ninja parent would go to the school to make trouble, just because their child was beaten up. Only civilian ninjas without vision would do such a thing. Encouraging them to retaliate is what true ninja parents parents should do, okay? Sasuke obviously had this idea. But after a pause, he raised his head and asked Brother Natsuo, do you know someone named Hayuga Niji? Niji? What happened to him? When I was about to lose, he came out and drove those people away. From his words, it seems like you know him. Natsuo calmly replied, I know him a little, but not much. In fact, Natsuo had contact with many people. In order to save the Achiha clan, he had also thought of many ways. For example, like what was written in many fanfictions, he united the large clans that were suppressed by the Third Hokage, overthrew the Third Hokage, annihilated the Anbu, and staged a coup in Kanoha. For this, he had made many preparations. For example, he gave Niji some advice before Hayuga Hazashi died. Other example was I taught a lesson to the brat who bullied Hanata. All of this was to establish a connection with the Hayuga clan for future actions. Unfortunately, the Achiha clan was still in a difficult situation, and Natsuo's preparations were in vain. In the end, Sasuke did not go home with Natsuo. He had to continue his training and strive to come back for revenge as soon as possible. Natsuo understood this. When other students were beaten, they could cry to their parents, cry to their teachers, show their weakness and seek comfort from others. But Sasuke couldn't do that. Because he represented the Achiha clan, he could only continue to enjoy and quickly regain his position. Otherwise, rumors would immediately spread that the Achiha clan had completely fallen, and they were no longer worthy of their past reputation. And the original Sasuke had even greater pressure than the current Sasuke. After all, in the original story, only Sasuke was left in the entire Achiha clan while now there was still Natsuo. Responsibility is a bad thing. It can easily crush a person, but it is also a good thing. It can test whether a person is capable. Natsuo shook his head. In the end, he handed some money to Sasuke, so that he could buy some food after finishing his training. In order to restore the reputation of the Achiha clan, Sasuke had to train hard, endure, and even fight countless powerful opponents in the future, with life and death hanging by a thread. But this was the price he had to pay in order to kill Itachi. Natsuo was the same, for the revival of the Achiha clan. He had to listen to music and watch dances in a boring manner. 
and have a large harem. He had to have a monotonous and affectionate relationship with his wives. He had to possess beauties, conquer them every day, and face all challenges with an iron will, like a steel bar sharpened when grinding a stone. This boredom and pain were known only to extraordinary people. Ah, uh, Natsuo shook his head, feeling deeply moved by his own efforts. Just as Natsuo was walking and feeling emotional, suddenly, a tender white arm reached out from beside him and pulled him over. Natsuo was stunned. A strong smell of alcohol instantly came over, mixed with a unique scent of musk. It was the fragrance of a woman. Come, Natsuo hit come and drink with me. Yuhi Koronai. Yuhi Koronai just wants to get drunk now. This afternoon, she had a big fight with Asuma. It started because of Natsuo's words, but it was mainly because Asuma proved that what he said was true. Even someone like you who has multiple wives, knows to respect every woman. Yet Asuma is monitoring me. Yuhi Koronai, with a strong smell of alcohol, had a red face and a hazy gaze. Natsuo sat on the chair, looking helpless. As someone who was pulled into this halfway, he didn't really want to say anything. Of course, Yuhi Koronai didn't need his answer. Why does that guy Asuma have the right to monitor me? Clearly I haven't done anything with him, but he still looks out for me. Why? If I talk to male colleagues for a few sentences, do I have to report to him as if he were my boyfriend? I know, a few colleagues who have talked to me before ended up inexplicably being promoted to meaningless positions. Isn't that a clear case of praising in public, but criticizing in private? How can they treat my friends like this? Relying on his identity as the Hokage's son, he really acts recklessly. Has he ever considered my feelings? Yuhi Kurunai shouted loudly with a strong smell of alcohol. Obviously, this person was very drunk, even saying things like relying on his identity as the Hokage's son. Natsuo sighed lightly, formed hand seals, and cast a Jinjutsu to prevent people around from hearing her words. This spoiled rich kid pursuing a girl's story shouldn't be heard by too many people. But he also understood that Yuhi Kurunai's words were probably true. Clearly, Asuma and Yuhi Kurunai were the same age and had known each other since they were young. But in the original plot it wasn't until a few years after Naruto and the others graduated that Asuma finally succeeded. Obviously, their relationship wasn't close before that, and there might even have been some hidden conflicts. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been such a long wait. But looking at Yuhi Kurunai, who was full of resentment, Natsuo sighed lightly, took a sip of wine, and comforted her. It's okay, if it doesn't work, you just reject it directly. It's not that easy. Yuhi Kurunai forced a bitter smile and downed another glass. I've already rejected him, but he's the Hokage's only son. Do you really think I can snub him? If you don't speak harshly, he really doesn't understand. Then came a series of complaints. Because of Asuma, all her teammates were female and her superiors didn't dare to assign any male teammates to her. And several times when she went on missions, she inexplicably encountered Asuma. She felt like even her captain deliberately cooperated with Asuma, selecting missions in the same locations as him. The more she spoke, the more she drank. The more she drank, the more she spoke. It was clear that Yuhi Kurunai had been accumulating this pressure for a long time. And even Natsuo, who happened to be there, was treated as a trash can by her. Fine, drink, drink. I've been doing too much lately, and my back is a bit sore. Let's just take today as a day off. Natsuo sighed lightly and picked up his glass, accompanying her in drinking. Seeing how distressed the beauty was, he decided to drink with her. The next day, the bright sunlight shone through the door. Natsuo furrowed his brows and couldn't help but squint and turn over. After turning over, he seemed to have bumped into something. This was normal, after all, he would always bump into something when he turned over every day. However, today seems different from usual. Ah, the piercing soprano voice made him abruptly sit up. He opened his eyes wide, only to see Yuhi Kurunai covering her naked body with a blanket, her face full of fear, looking at Natsuo. Oh, Yuhi Kurunai, what's the big fuss about her? Natsuo suddenly became sober. Yuhi Kurunai also gradually lowered her tone. The two of them looked at each other. Why are you here? I don't know. What about you? I don't know either what happened last night. I remember you grabbed me, and we drank, then Natsuo was trying hard to recall. Last night, Yuhi Kurunai complained to him about Asuma, and he just accompanied her for a few drinks. He didn't drink much, and he thought with his alcohol tolerance, there shouldn't be any problems. But Natsuo overlooked one thing, he couldn't drink while trying to have children, so he had been avoiding alcohol for a long time. Not drinking for too long weakens one's alcohol tolerance. So, Natsuo got drunk too, and then he drank even more, following Yuhi Kurunai's words. He started cursing Asuma, and even represented the Achiha clan, saying that the third Hokage was trash. Before, Natsuo had been worried about being implicated because of the Achiha clan, and had been under a lot of stress, almost disappearing completely. All of this was Saratobi Hiruzen's fault. The more they cursed, the more they drank. And then, as they kept drinking, they eventually Natsuo quietly lifted the blanket a little. There were scattered bloodstains on the bedsheet, blooming like plum blossoms. Although his actions were discreet, Yui Kurunai also saw this scene. She suddenly became angry and grabbed a pillow, throwing it 
it Natsuo. It's all because of you. It's all because of you. This is mine wait. Natsuo grabbed the pillow, interrupting her. If my last memory is correct, it seems like you shouted something like damn it, Asuma. I gave it to Natsuo and not you. And then you pounced on me. Yui Kor and I stared blankly at Natsuo. It seems like that's exactly what happened. But I don't care. It's still your fault. It is meaningless to reason with women. Natsuo once again realized this. But the only advantage is that, in such matters, men can never lose. Don't think that because of my momentary mistake, you can really continue with me. Yuhi Kura and I tried hard to put on a fierce look, but her pretty face blushed in embarrassment. I'm telling you, nothing happened yesterday. If you dare to expose what happened yesterday, you're done for. As she spoke, her eyes almost popped out. Natsuo, sister, am I not the victim here? Clearly, it was you who forced yourself on me. Of course, last night you were acting completely different. Natsuo muttered softly. What did you say? Yuhi Kura and I glared angrily at Natsuo. I said you're right, nothing happened yesterday. I just happened to pass by your house. Only then did Yuhi Kuranai's anger subside slightly. She nodded and said, Since you know it was just a coincidence, then hurry up and leave. Why didn't you say that last night? Now you just denied knowing me after pulling up your pants. Fine, I'll leave. Is it not okay for me to leave? Natsuo began to get dressed. Wait, what's wrong? Yuhi Kuranai threatened through gritted teeth. Be careful when you leave, don't let anyone find out. If someone finds out, you're done for. Natsuo. But this unexpected encounter didn't bother Natsuo. After all, he had nothing to lose. As for Yuhi Kuranai, he didn't think much of her either. The Yuhi Kuranai's family didn't have the same problems as the Mitarashi clan. On the contrary, as a staunch ninja clan of the Hokage lineage, the Yuhi Kuranai's family may not have much authority, but they were not lacking in money. They had also accumulated a fair amount of ninjutsu, at least not lacking in intermediate and low-level ninjutsu besides Jinjutsu. Natsuo has always been pure, just looking for a female ninja who is willing to accept his situation and have children with him. And obviously, Yuhi Kuranai is a woman of the new era who is not lacking in money, has outstanding talent, and has a relatively independent personality. Unwilling to be a man's appendage is not Natsuo's target. Last night was just an accident. When leaving, Natsuo also followed Yuhi Kuranai's instructions, deliberately concealing his figure and leaving without being noticed by anyone. For him, who already had Jonin level strength, this was not difficult. However, Yuhi Kuranai's sex without love is an empty experience. But as an empty experience, it was one of the most comforting. Hokage office. Here is an, look at the Ichiha clan. Danzo roared angrily, they actually hired ninjas from other villages to protect their own family. Is this acceptable? The esteemed Ichiha clan, even if they have a small population and lack combat power, can still hire ninjas from Okinawa village. What kind of reasons might they have for hiring outsiders? He was referring to the external recruitment of Kakuzu by Natsuo. Regarding this matter, Natsuo did not hide anything. There are regulations in Kanoha that allow outsiders to stay in the village, and the Kanoha does not prohibit other ninjas from entering the village. As long as they are not wanted criminals, anyone can legally and reasonably enter Kanoha. Oh, Kakuzu is a wanted criminal, an S rank missing nin from the Takigaka. But he can disguise himself, right? Of course, things are not that simple, and there are also many conditions and restrictions. However, the Achiha clan, after all, is a prominent family in Kanoha, and with the reputation of their clan, they naturally won't be hindered by the procedures. Perhaps they no longer trust the village. Saratobi Hirazan took a deep drag on his cigarette. They might have guessed something, and feel that the genocide committed by Itachi may have some connection to certain individuals in the village. In the original plot, even Sasuke, who only spent his childhood in Kanoha, was able to figure out the problem later on, and deduce that Atachi alone was not enough to wipe out the entire clan. Moreover, Natsuo has been in Kanoha for a long time and is a ninja himself, so he can discover some clues, right? Not to mention Natsuo, those big clans are actually quite clear in their hearts. Otherwise, Saratobi Hirazan would not have revoked Danzo's leadership of Root immediately after the Achiha clan was annihilated. Hirazan, we should eliminate the root of the problem. Danzo said without hesitation, the matter of the Achiha clan must never be exposed. What if this Achiha Natsuo is someone who hides very deeply, and his existence could pose a threat to the village? The Achiha clan possesses the Manjekyo Sharingan. No, Danzo, you're overthinking it. Saratobi Hirazan decisively shook his head. You and I have seen his information. He is just an average Achiha far from being able to awaken the Manjekia Sharingan. Moreover, the fact that he hired outsiders actually proves that he only suspects a small group of people. Saratobi Hirazan lowered his head and looked at Natsuo's information. If he really guessed the truth, why would he hire outsiders so openly? The correct approach would be to pretend not to know anything and continue accumulating strength, right? Besides, the Achiha clan leader is quite busy. Saratobi Hirazan said with a hint of sarcasm, many Kunorchas have joined the Achiha clan. 
He can have a different wife every night. It's truly enviable. Cough, cough, it's despicable. Danzo also understood this point. He understood even more that Natsuo's promiscuous lifestyle was a complete abandonment of progress and strength, lacking the pride of the Achiha. Hiring outsiders only further proves that he only suspects a certain group of people like himself. But... That person is still an Achiha. Danzo's eyes were filled with hostility, and he thought to himself, the dead Achiha is the best Achiha. The Achiha clan should not exist in this world. Here is an, if you don't take action, then I will. I will bear the darkness of Kanoha. Root, begin the operation. When Natsuo was younger, he thought that things like trade wars and power struggles were all kinds of intricate battles with a higher level of wit, intelligence, style, and elegance. When experts clashed, there would be hidden currents, intricate connections, and it could be considered a war without gunpowder. But as he grew up, several news stories shattered his beautiful illusions. Competitors organizing their employees to post explicit images on a rival company's app, and then reporting it themselves. Executives personally leading 30 strong men to directly seize official seals and tear up business licenses. Founders of publicly traded companies hire people to sneak over the wall to secretly film their competitors' embarrassing acts. Chairman hiring people to break into rival companies' safes. Business wars in my imagination. Battles of wits and conspiracies, attacks and counterattacks in the darkness. Business wars in the reality. Fights on the street corners. The most high-end business wars often employ the simplest methods. And when it is transferred to the world of Naruto, the fights between great ninjas are the same. Ninja wars in my imagination. Inciting public opinion to suppress the enemy. Using political power to harm a village. Using superior strategic deployment capabilities. Using the enemy's force to attack those who oppose you. Ninja wars in the reality. Immediately dispatching ninjas for assassination. As for the Achihas, they never used any fancy methods. Direct attack was their style. However, at the same time, it was also the most effective method. And so, today, Natsuo had a smile on his face as he looked at jewelry on the street, seemingly planning to buy a few pieces as gifts for his wives. Several root ninjas slowly approached. They acted inconspicuously as if they were ordinary customers strolling around. There were also honest vendors selling their wares, occasionally causing some arguments. But suddenly, Natsuo abruptly woke up and sensed that something was wrong. Who are you? What do you want? He exclaimed in shock and reached for his kunai. Attack. The root ninjas never thought they could hide until the end. After all, Natsuo was also a ninja. Even if he had fallen, his instincts remained, and they couldn't give him too many opportunities. They made a quick decision and attacked directly. In the next second, several kunai were shot out like a shower of stars. Earth release. Earth star wall. Natsuo clapped his hands together in quickly formed hand seals. And a wall of earth blocked the kunai's attack. Damn it. Who are you people? How dare you attack openly on the streets of Kanoha? He shouted, continuously retreating. At this moment, the surrounding pedestrians also reacted and instantly screamed in fear, running for their lives. In their eyes, there was also a hint of disbelief. This was Kanoha, the strongest ninja village, Kanoha. Even during several great ninja wars, Kanoha village had never been attacked. Now, someone dared to commit violence openly in Kanoha village. The root ninjas remained expressionless, completely ignoring everyone else. Their target was only Natsuo. Natsuo activated his Sharingan, fighting and retreating at the same time. Although the fight was brief, it was still evident how powerful the enemy was. One Jonin, two Tokibetsu Jonin, one Elite Shunin. This is a complete Jonin team. What is the third Hokage doing? How could he allow ninjas of this level to walk into the village so openly? Without our Achiha division of the Kanoha police, can't the village even protect its own citizens anymore? He shouted angrily. But his actions did not hesitate as he continued to retreat. Chase. The leader of the Jonin team ordered without hesitation. Although this place was not the center of the village, it was still a bustling area. Kanoha ninjas could arrive to support at any moment. Although Danzo had arranged the patrolling ninjas far away, creating a gap in defense, he couldn't control the passing ninjas. Time is running out. All kinds of ninjutsu are naturally thrown away without any cost. Boom, 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 boom. Countless stalls were blasted into debris by ninjutsu. But Natsuo was still running around, alive and kicking. Just a tune-in like Natsuo, actually able to dodge the attacks of myself and others, with the sharp vision brought by the Sharingan, and a bit of luck. Damn it, Ichiha is really troublesome. The Jonin team leader felt anxious in his heart. Time is indeed urgent. Sure enough. The more worried you are, the more likely problems will arise. Someone actually dares to make a move in the village. Do they think we can know who Shinobi are all dead? A loud roar and a man dressed in a dark green bodysuit appeared. Mike Guy. The Jonin team leader's eyes twitched. This guy is an elite Jonin, and I'm no match for him. Hi, you go hold him back. Yes. A special Jonin received the order. Although Mike Guy's reputation is slightly weaker than Kakashi's, 
Sending a special Jonin to hold him back basically confirms the death of this special Jonin. But after all, Root is an organization that is determined to complete the mission, so no one's expression changed. The remaining three continued to chase Natsuo. Natsuo, who are you people? Enko, dressed in a fishnet outfit, also stood up with a serious expression. The Jonin made a decisive decision. Kotaro, you go hold her back. Enko's strength is not weak, although she is not as strong as Mike Guy. The ninjutsu taught by Orochimaru is quite troublesome. He left behind the weakest Jonin in the team. But as they continued to chase the nearby patrol team finally arrived. The Jonin team leader had to leave the last special Jonin to entangle the police ninja and chase after Natsu alone. But after a few exchanges, the distance between them had already closed. Of course, Natsu was also about to reach the Ichiha clan's residence. But you can't escape. The Jonin's eyes revealed a fierce look about to make a move. Natsuo's voice was filled with fear. Kakuzu, save me. It's useless. With this distance, no one can save you. Either Jonin was about to make a move. The next second, Natsuo suddenly turned around. The expression that should have been filled with fear was calmly terrifying. His chakra suddenly erupted. Taking a deep breath, he suddenly exhaled. Fire release. Great fire annihilation arrow. The raging flames suddenly extended out. In almost an instant, the surroundings turned into a sea of fire. The air temperature rapidly rose. Heat waves surged, and the red flames soared. The Jonin team leader was the first to bear the brunt. He rushed too fast, leaving no room for escape. So, in almost an instant, he was burned by the raging fire, directly engulfed. You. The Jonin only managed to shout in fear before immediately falling silent. In his eyes, there was a strong sense of doubt. You're clearly so strong. Why did you pretend to be weak and run away until now? The flames burned fiercely on the battlefield, leaving no trace behind. The surrounding buildings were directly reduced to ashes under such violent flames. Natsuo slowly withdrew his hand, a hint of amusement in his eyes, and whispered, Danzo, did you really think I was so weak? After several system rewards, Natsuo had gained the strength to rival an elite Jonin. How could he not discover a few root ninjas? To kill him? Impossible. As for why he only took action now whoosh. Kakuzu stood up with a dissatisfied expression. You called me out just to see a corpse. He had thought he could make some extra money. No, thank you for protecting me, Mr. Kakuzu. Thanks to you. I was saved. Otherwise, I would have almost died at the hands of these assassins. Natsuo shook his head lightly and smiled. You truly exceeded my expectations, sir. Kakuzu frowned. He understood what Natsuo meant. This guy wanted to continue hiding and use him as a shield. But hey, I only protect your child. This is not within the agreed scope. To express my gratitude for saving my life, I have decided to give Mr. Kakuzu 1 million Ryo as a reward for your efforts. Kakuzu fell silent for 3 seconds. If I don't have to compensate for the buildings affected around here, then I can accept it. Thank you very much, Mr. Kakuzu. Natsuo smiled gently and slowly walked back to his residence. The women in the house heard the news and rushed over. Another reward had been received. Kakuzu felt sweeter than if he had eaten honey. But when he looked at the scene where almost the entire street had been destroyed by the flames, he couldn't help but take a deep look at Natsuo's back of him. No wonder this guy didn't let him protect him. Because he didn't need anyone's protection at all. Everyone had underestimated the head of the Ichiha clan. News spread quickly that a ninja had attempted to assassinate Ichiha Natsuo in broad daylight, and the enemy was ultimately killed by the bodyguard hired by the Ichiha clan. Upon hearing this news, Danzo furrowed his brows. He wasn't able to kill him. This shouldn't be possible. But after reading the detailed report about the incident, I understood. So many formidable ninjas have emerged at Chiha Natsuo. You're really lucky. Natsuo was just a Chunin. How could he survive in the midst of so many ninja assassinations? The reason, of course, was the interference of Mike Guy and others. And then there was Kakuzu, who made his move at the end. If he had been a little later, he would have taken Natsuo's eyes, right? Kakuzu, the renowned bounty hunter in the black market. I never expected his strength to surpass his reputation. Compared to the calm Danzo, the third Hokage sprayed his tea all over. Damn it, Danzo, what the hell are you thinking? This matter is not difficult to investigate, and with Danzo's hasty actions, there are too many loopholes. Everyone is well aware of the fighting style of the Root Ninjas. And before he could blame Danzo, the major clans came angrily to his door. The third Hokage roared angrily in his heart, but he had to start dealing with the aftermath. This is Cloud Shinobi Village's attempt to steal on Akinoha's bloodline limit. The third Hokage's words were like golden jade, directly defining the incident. Then, in the astonished gazes of the major clan leaders, he sent a diplomatic notice to Cloud Shinobi Village, demanding compensation. This was probably the most powerful speech by the third Hokage during his term, right? 
Of course, Cloud Shinobi Village would probably treat this notice as a joke. The leaders of the major clans would never believe such words. But Danzo's actions left no concrete evidence. Additionally, the Root Ninjas died, erasing anything that could link the incident to Danzo. Even the patrol ninjas who provided opportunities for assassination were thoroughly investigated. Without evidence, and with the protection of the Hokage, Danzo once again easily escaped. The ninjas of the major clans could only leave with suppressed anger. Danzo is a suitable tool. During the third Hokage's term, the power of the major clans was weakened to some extent. Without clear evidence, they were powerless to resist the Hokage. But the villagers of Kanoha were furious. Kanoha has been established for 59 years, and there has never been an enemy who could infiltrate the village. Even the Nine Tails incident eight years ago was essentially an internal problem of Kanoha. Now, someone openly assassinated our ninjas in broad daylight in the middle of the bustling market. Is Kanoha still the number one village in the ninja world? The ninjas responsible for patrolling should just commit seppuku. Who can guarantee our safety? The people were furious. At this time, Natsuo went door to door with his wives, apologizing to the victims who had lost their homes in this battle. I'm sorry, it's all because of me. If it weren't for the assassination targeting me, you wouldn't have had to go through this. Ichiha Natsuo looked apologetic. No, 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 this is all a conspiracy by enemy ninja villagers. The victims expressed one after another, Lord Natsuo, you are innocent. Not to mention the cash compensation that far exceeded the value of the properties. Natsuo must be innocent. Natsuo apologized a few more times, and then joined the victims in cursing the influence of the external villagers, feeling a sense of unity against a common enemy. Damn it. Our Kanoha's patrol forces have become lazy. Natsuo cursed, when we Achiha were in charge of the security team, Kanoha never experienced such blatant assassinations. Hearing this, the victims also sighed, yes. It was when you Achiha were in charge of the security team that Kanoha was the safest. Compared to the current bunch of useless people, you Achiha are reliable. Previously, the Achihas may have resisted using any method other than a direct approach to deal with their problems. Due to their pride, perhaps this type of mentality is one of the main reasons that led them to be in a situation of isolation and rejection within Kanoha. Who knows? What Natsuo is clear about is that he still does not have enough strength to wipe out everything, and he cannot have a direct confrontation with Kanoha's senior management. But that can't stop me from charging them a little interest. Then, under Natsuo's deliberate guidance, countless people in Kanoha village suddenly began to miss the Ichiha clan. This is quite normal. Human beings are strange. They fight with the living and bring flowers for the dead. He turns away from the living and looks desperate when they die. He goes years without talking to a living person and apologizes and pays tributes when he dies. He criticizes speaks badly, offends the living, but sanctifies him when he dies. When the Achiha clan was alive, many Kanoha shinobi resented them for their strict enforcement of the law. But after their deaths, everyone forgot about their harshness. And in the face of the current situation where Kanoha village's security forces are unable to protect the safety of the people, they immediately remembered the benefits of the Achiha. Although the Achiha clan was arrogant, they never shirked their responsibilities. After being arranged by the second Hokage to become the security force, Kanoha's public order immediately stabilized. All kinds of criminals were captured and imprisoned without mercy. They also patrolled diligently and sacrificed their lives to protect the safety of the people on critical occasions. The Achiha clan has done this countless times. Even during the Great Ninja War, Kanoha Village's public order never had any problems. On the contrary, it was so peaceful that it didn't seem like they were at war with enemy countries. A situation like the current one where an attack by enemies affected a large area of the city, something like this has never happened before. The victims immediately remembered the good Achiha. Although the Achiha clan is arrogant, they are very reliable. Yes, I have never heard of the Achiha clan retreating in the face of the enemy. Compared to before, the public order now is much worse. Yes, it would be so much better if the Achiha was still here. It's a pity that such a reliable Achiha clan was wiped out. Everyone began to reminisce, and then collectively criticized the current Kanoha security forces. For a while, the entire Kanoha village united in their anger. If a major war were to break out now, would Kanoha village be bombed into the sky? Compared to the Achiha, all of you are far inferior. Can you protect us? These public opinions made the third Hokage extremely worried. He had to severely punish the captain of the security force, and also punish Danzo. Then he increased his efforts to appease the villagers, and the compensation for the victims was paid by Kanoha. He even gave additional compensation. In front of many villagers, he boasted about the Achiha, saying that the current security force was far inferior to the one managed by the Achiha. The Achiha were loyal and dedicated, and it was such a waste for the clan to be destroyed by a rogue ninja like Itachi. Anyway, the Achiha are almost all dead now. So no matter how much honor the dead have, it doesn't matter. The third Hokage even promoted Natsuo to Jonin, bypassing the usual procedures. Although the entire Kanoha knew that Natsuo was only a nominal Jonin, 
and was actually a Chunin who was being chased by a Jonin who tried to assassinate him. This move was to restore the reputation of the Achiha clan. The reason why Natsuo had so many wives was partly due to the Achiha's wealth, and partly due to the Achiha clan's reputation. Some talented female ninjas hesitated because of the previous negative reputation of the Achiha clan. I have put a lot of effort into the Achiha, Natsuo sighed. But I don't plan to endure this quietly, Danzo. That's right. Although there was no direct evidence, Natsuo had already guessed that Danzo was behind this. Would the Achiha clan swallow their pride? Don't be ridiculous, Elder Danzo. The Achiha we have now is no longer the security force that operates according to the system. The Achiha who are not part of the security force, don't need evidence to take action. Shimura clan headquarters. As a prominent clan in Kanoha, the Shimura clan is not much inferior to the Saratobi clan, who can directly produce a ninja force from their own family. The Achiha clan back then was known as the largest clan in Kanoha. All of this naturally couldn't have happened without someone's contribution. Danzo slowly walked into the room, his movements somewhat sluggish, like an ordinary old man. There were also some members of the Shimura clan inside the house. But when they saw the seemingly ordinary man enter, they all stopped chatting and lowered their heads in greeting. Although they enjoyed the benefits brought by this man, when faced with this old man, even if they were from the same clan, they were filled with fear. Danzo-sama, you've worked hard. A middle-aged ninja swallowed his saliva and took Danzo's clothes. Mem. Danzo nodded expressionlessly. Report today's information. Many members of the Shimura clan have joined Root. Of course, they naturally received special treatment, and did not need to be subjected to the tongue curse seal. Ichiha Natsuo personally took his wives to visit the victims who were injured in the previous attack. In his words, there was a hint of, if Ichiha was still here, such things would never be allowed to happen. Because of that Ichiha brat, many people are reminiscent about the Achiha clan, and think that the current police force is rubbish. Third Hokage used this as an opportunity to punish the person in charge of the police force, depriving the ninja who neglected their duties that day of their rights, and ordered the promotion of Natsuo to Jonin. Root is also a member of the Anbu, and the Anbu has the responsibility of gathering intelligence. Mem Danzo nodded slowly. Third Hokage taking advantage of this matter was completely within his expectations, but it was just some insignificant rights. He just didn't expect that Natsuo would dare to defend the Achiha clan now. Shem PH, he truly is the only survivor of the Achiha, so lucky. Danzo's voice carried a hint of coldness. Sasuke doesn't really count as a survivor because no one wants to harm him. But Natsuo is a true survivor, relying on luck to escape the massacre of his clan. It seems like the Achiha needs a lesson. Of course, not now. Saratobi Hiruzen is keeping a close eye on him, but there will be plenty of opportunities in the future. Suddenly, Danzo's expression changed, and he looked up at the roof. Hum, who is it? Boom. The next second, a loud crashing sound. The wooden roof was smashed open by a wooden box the size of a suitcase, and crashed to the ground. Who is it? Who threw that thing? Someone in the sky. The sudden attack made the Shimura clan somewhat panicked. But they were elite ninjas after all, and their reactions were very quick. Some rushed to the roof, some protected Danzo, and some cautiously approached the slightly broken wooden box, full of vigilance. Danzo suddenly frowned, does this wooden box seem to be making some kind of sound? Sound. Everyone listen carefully. Sizzle. 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 Indeed, there was a strange sound coming from the box, a sound they had never heard before. But it felt somewhat familiar. Explosive tags. Danzo's face changed. The next second. Boom. The next day, a piece of news spread throughout Kanoha. The Shimura clan was attacked by unknown enemies with explosive tags, resulting in the death and injury of two Jonin and five Chunin. Elder Danzo was also injured. An elder of Kanoha village actually suffered an attack from enemies within the village. Damn the security team, you are far worse than the Achiha clan. Now the third Hokage is truly angry. Previously, one could only say that the security team intentionally neglected their duties under Danzo's orders. But now it is clear that these guys are truly useless. Without hesitation, the third Hokage directly ordered the Kanoha Anbu to take over. However, even the Anbu couldn't find any information. It's just too simple to throw a box. Just catch an eagle from the forest of death, control it with Jinjutsu, and have it fly to Danzo's side to drop the box. If the timing of the explosion is controlled well, there is no need for any ninja to show up, making it impossible to trace. Go and investigate the origin of the explosive tags. The third Hokage angrily said, With so many explosive tags used in this bombing, I refuse to believe that we can't find out who did it. The entire intelligence department of Kanoha went into action, but still no results. It would be strange if they could find out. Natsuo thought to himself, because what I used was not explosive tags, but gunpowder. In the Naruto world, the development is quite strange. Although there are electric lights and movies, also in there will be various magical chakra weapons in the future. But there is no gunpowder. Even when opening mines, they use precious explosive tags. As a typical example of having mines at home, Natsuo simply gathered a large amount of gunpowder from the byproducts of some minerals. 
He stored some of this gunpowder and the rest of the gunpowder he set up as traps. This can be considered as Natsuo's backup plan to avoid being attacked in Kanova and killing his enemies. As an experienced warrior, Danzo initially did not notice the problem with the wooden box, because the sound of the gunpowder fuse burning was different from the sound of the explosive tags being ignited. But no matter what, the incompetence of the Kanova security team has been known to everyone. The people of Kanova village are even more angry, considering this incompetent security team to be a disgrace to Kanoha. They brought up the performance of the Achiha clan from years ago to make comparisons and criticize these mediocre individuals. At the same time, they reminisced about the management of the Achiha clan back then. For a while, nostalgia for the Achihas became a daily topic among the people of Kanoha village. This matter is getting bigger and bigger. Shimura Danzo and Saratobi Hirazen did not suspect that this was Natsuo's revenge. After all, Natsuo was just a small chunin who was recently promoted to Jonin for political reasons. How could he possibly do such a thing? After Achiha Natsuo was attacked by Danzo, it is only right for the grieving Achiha clan to issue a warning. The Achiha clan instinctively fought back, propagating the goodness of the Achiha clan from the past, upholding the reputation of the Achiha clan, and undermining the authority of Danzo and the Third Hokage. The controversy grew larger and larger. Even the students at the ninja school understood. Sasuke, I didn't expect the Achiha clan to be so powerful before. Little Sakura exclaimed, without you, the public security in Kanoha has declined significantly. The Achiha clan is indeed powerful, it's Sasuke's family. Ino proudly raised her head, if it weren't for a trader, Kanoha wouldn't have to worry about public security at all. Sasuke heard this and felt a bit uncomfortable. In the end, the Achiha clan was annihilated, leaving only him and Natsuo. Whether those babies can grow up to become outstanding Achihas is still uncertain. But amidst the discomfort, there was also some happiness. Of course, we Achihas are the strongest. He proudly raised his head in the future. I will restore the glory of the Achiha clan, and truly revive the Achiha clan. Little Sakura and the other girls immediately applauded and nodded vigorously. They weren't stupid, they knew they had to please Sasuke in order to secure a girlfriend position. However, they were still young, and as they spoke, they somehow veered into the topic they cared most about. Sasuke, didn't Natsuo say that in order to revive the Achiha clan, you must have a wife? What do you think of me? You go away? I am the strongest Kunochi in the ninja school. I am the most compatible with Sasuke. No, what the Achiha clan needs is a wife who can take care of children, and I am the best at taking care of children. I even helped my aunt's little brother change diapers. Can you do that? The girls started chattering and arguing. On the other hand, little Sakura spoke with a heavy heart. Sasuke, I heard that your brother married several wives. You must not become a womanizer like him. He's not a good person who would marry so many people normally. I heard he gave up the honor of being a ninja and became obsessed with dating girls. Sasuke, you must not be like him. When Sasuke heard little Sakura's words, he, who had almost ignored the girls around him, suddenly became furious. Little Sakura, what do you know? Sasuke said angrily, you don't know at all how much Natsuo sacrificed, so that I could train without having to worry about the affairs of the Achiha clan, so that one day I can restore the glory of the Achihas with my own hands. Do you know that I saw him fight hard until dawn every day with barely any sleep? Do you know that Natsuo endured the ridicule of other ninja from different clans? but still had to insist on marrying and having wives, and had to get along with a large group of women, living a life he didn't want. Do you know that this year, the Achiha clan has grown from two members to 17, all thanks to Natsuo's efforts? Thinking about the group of chattering girls around him, Sasuke couldn't help but feel annoyed. He couldn't even imagine what it would be like if Natsuo wasn't there, and he had to live with a group of girls, in order to revive the Achiha clan. What kind of annoyance would that be? It would feel like death. Sasuke glared at Little Sakura. Little Sakura? Do you know that the reason I can have a peaceful time at the ninja school is all because Natsuo carried the burden for me? What right do you have to say such things about him? Sasuke glared angrily at Little Sakura. In the past, whenever he faced Little Sakura, he would either be impatient or ignore her, rarely showing any other attitude. But this time, it was the first time Sasuke's attitude had changed. However, if possible, Little Sakura definitely did not want this kind of change. She stood there dumbfounded, tears welling up in her eyes on the verge of crying. But she choked back her tears in Sasuke's roar. The atmosphere at the school gate was extremely tense. Some people wanted to persuade them, but they were silenced by Sasuke's killing intent. He was truly angry. And at this moment Sasuke, I'm glad you can think of me like that. It's good that someone recognizes my efforts. A voice with a hint of laughter sounded. Natsuo walked over with a smile, gently rubbing Sasuke's head. But when it comes to dealing with girls, it's better to be magnanimous. Men shouldn't take things so seriously. Then he looked at little Sakura and smiled gently. It's all right, as you said. I'm not really a good person after all. After all, bad boys attract girls, don't they? Chem PH. Sasuke tried to maintain his cool guy image. 
But obviously, with his face being rubbed and distorted, he couldn't display any killing intent. The atmosphere immediately eased, and everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Little Sakura lowered her head even more. I'm sorry, big brother Natsuo. I shouldn't have talked behind your back. She just didn't want to see Sasuke become a playboy, and it wasn't that she had any dissatisfaction with Natsuo. It's alright. Natsuo smiled slightly. Besides, I think you're a good girl. Little Sakura, you can point out the problems of the person you care about directly regardless of whether it will affect your relationship. Sincerity, not hypocrisy. That's a good quality. Um, I just don't want to see Sasuke being a playboy. I didn't think so much about it. But, big brother Natsuo, you're a good person. Little Sakura suddenly developed some good feelings towards this handsome big brother. Um, I really didn't expect to receive a good person card from a girl your age. Natsuo self-mockingly smiled. At least wait until you're a bit older to give it to me. EFFT. Naruto, Shikamaru, and others couldn't help but burst into laughter. Sasuke's brother was quite interesting. Hinata next to them couldn't help but take a few more glances at Natsuo. And with one glance, she was stunned. Then she looked carefully. Her pure white eyes gradually brightened, becoming more and more radiant, exuding an extraordinary brilliance. This big brother, it seems like he saved me before. On the other side, Natsuo was also eloquent, making the girls laugh and smile. They were just a few little girls, even if they were precocious, could they compare to adults? Natsuo was a man who had been through countless battles, able to maintain harmony in his harem. He could make adults feel happy and obediently assume various poses, let alone a few little girls. Naruto looked on in astonishment. This big brother Natsuo, he's really good at talking. Naruto was shocked. Both little Sakura and Ino are laughing so happily. Sasuke looked at Natsuo and the girls, lost in thought. Big brother Natsuo, why are you here? Sasuke asked. I came to pick you up and take you home. Natsuo sighed lightly, spreading his hands. It's the responsibility of your guardian. With this attack, Natsuo caused a lot of trouble for the third Hokage, gained face for the Ichiha clan, and also gained some rewards. But he also had to deal with more trouble himself. According to Yukino's words, Natsuo, you and Sasuke are the hope of the Ichiha clan. Now that someone dares to attack you, who knows if they will also target Sasuke. So, Natsuo had to pick up and bring Sasuke home during this period of time. Although he understood the deterrence of Itachi, Danzo still didn't dare to easily lay a hand on Sasuke. He also understood that the third Hokage had long arranged for the Anbu to protect Sasuke at all times, ensuring his safety before he became a ninja. But he still had to fulfill the responsibilities of a parent. It was just like the parents who immediately started picking up their children after a fight broke out at the school gate in his previous life. TCH, I can go home alone, Sasuke muttered a few times. But in the end, he still went home with Natsuo. In the following days, Natsuo continued to pick up Sasuke after school. Sasuke also kept complaining. Natsuo, I can go home by myself. I'm a ninja from the Ichiha clan. What ninja from any family needs to be picked up? This is simply tarnishing the reputation of our Ichiha clan. He expressed great dissatisfaction with this. It made him look like a little child who had just started school. According to the customs of the ninja clan, except for the first year of the ninja school, they really wouldn't pick up and drop off their children. Anyway, Kanoha's public security was good, and ninja students were still ninjas. It was impossible for them to be pampered like Natsuo in his previous life. Sasuke, this proud little guy, naturally found it even more uncomfortable. In the end, under Sasuke's resistance, Natsuo kept a distance from him, acting as a guardian, while Sasuke walked ahead, with the standard of not going out of Natsuo's line of sight, conducting a kind of long-distance pick-up and drop-off. You look even more like a child pretending to be an adult, Natsuo thought to himself. To show off his maturity and not let adults pick him up, isn't this more childish? Well, whatever, it's up to him. After all, I'm I'm just going through the motions. Suddenly, a small hand quietly pulled Natsuo's sleeve. Big brother Natsuo, do you recognize me? I'm Naruto, Sasuke's classmate. Naruto, with his light yellow hair, looked around sneakily. Oh, Naruto. I know, Natsuo smiled slightly. I may have known about you earlier than you think. But Naruto thought that Sasuke had secretly told Natsuo about him at home. He thought that Sasuke, that guy, seemed cold and arrogant. But it was all just an act. But that's a small matter. Suddenly, Naruto became serious and bowed deeply to Natsuo. Big brother Natsuo, teach me how to pick up girls. Please. Big brother Natsuo, teach me how to pick up girls. Please, I beg you. Naruto was extremely envious. He had never seen such a situation where a man was surrounded by women and could make them all happy. The key was that the quality of these girls was also extremely high. Naruto had once caught a glimpse of Natsuo taking the girls shopping, and his wife's appearance was excellent. 
It made Naruto jealous to even mention it. Well, if you want to learn this from me, it's fine, Natsuo said indifferently. Speaking of which, as someone who aspired to revive the Achiha clan, Natsuo didn't seem to actively pursue girls. It was always the girls who came to him. But it didn't matter. It was still possible to fool Naruto. That's great. Naruto happily jumped three feet high. He was as happy as an eight-year-old child. His requirements weren't high. If he could learn a thing or two and pick up Sakura, that would be enough. Natsuo glanced indifferently at Sasuke, who was about to disappear. He had nothing better to do anyway. Let's go, we can talk while walking. To become a Posidon, the most important thing is to cast a wide net. There's a saying that goes, cast a wide net, catch many fish, and select the best. If really want to live a Posidon's life, first, you need to find enough potential targets, and then focus on selecting. In this stage, the most important thing is to be especially good to everyone. Natsuo continued, after selecting enough targets, we need to create a harmless image. There's an old saying that goes, the most advanced hunter often appears in the form of prey. As Naruto listened, he became hesitant and fidgety. Big brother Natsuo, is this really, okay? After all, he was still just a child, and he felt a little embarrassed. What are you feeling guilty about? Natsuo shook his head and said impatiently, as a Posidon, from now on, you can only be physically weak, not mentally weak, cough, cough. Or do you want to win one person's heart and never part until old age? That's also possible. Which style do you want to go for? Naruto's face turned a little red. Winning a person's heart is naturally good, but the life of a Posidon hugging one wife on the left and another on the right also seemed, after hesitating for a while, Naruto finally said, Big Brother Natsuo, can I learn both? Adults make choices, but children like Naruto want to learn everything. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 41, you gain chakra plus two, fire release. Great fireball technique. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 47, you gain mental power plus two, demonic illusion. Tree binding death. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 52, you gain chakra plus three. The Achiha residence has become even more lively with the recent birth of babies. Sasuke is so happy that he seems to be walking on air. With such a large population, the revival of the Achiha clan is within reach. Natsuo also has a smile on his face as his own strength has increased. However, among this batch of wives who gave birth, there is no female ninja as talented as Yuzuki Yugao. They are relatively average. Yuzuki Yugao's child is still the most talented baby at the moment, bringing Natsuo the greatest reward. Carefully examining the potential of each baby, Natsuo couldn't help but approach Yuzuki Yugao and spend some quality time with her. Yuzuki Yugao didn't know whether to laugh or cry and said, Natsuo, what are you doing? I'm pregnant again, and I can't accompany you, hey, stop be careful you might hurt the baby. Now, there are more and more babies being born, providing a rich sample. Natsuo can already roughly determine that the talents of both parents directly influence the potential of their children. In the ninja world, bloodline inheritance is a source of power. Of course, this is a relative issue. It can only be said that if the parents are strong, there is a high probability that the child will have high potential. It does not mean that if the parents are amazing, the child will definitely be extraordinary. However, this also led Natsuo to make a decision. In the future, when recruiting, we should consider stricter assessments. Quality may be more important than quantity. Or perhaps as the number of female ninjas he accepts increases, it has become a situation of many phoenixes vying for the single dragon. Beauty brings suffering, handsomeness brings exhaustion. Natsuo's energy is not infinite. At a certain point, quantity can no longer keep up with quality. Perhaps he should make a choice. No, I can't give up on quantity either. Natsuo felt excited in his heart. Maybe I should start working hard to train my body. Or learn medical ninjutsu, scientifically regulate daily exercise, delay time, increase ammunition, and ultimately be able to fight against many opponents. We can't give up on quality either. It's not just about finding high quality women. Perhaps we can also let our wives and concubines train more. With training, they might even reach the level of Chunin or Jonin. If the wives improve their strength, the children they give birth to will naturally become much stronger. We must do both. We must be strong in both aspects. However, Kinochis are different from male ninjas. If he wants to become stronger, it would be best to learn from female experts who are also female ninjas. Natsuo decided to invest a lot of money in acquiring data of powerful kinojis, such as body growth data, strength improvement curves, ninjutsu training templates, to research a path that will allow his wives to progress rapidly. There are many targets, such as Tsunade, Nayujito, and even the deceased Bakura. They can all serve as learning materials. This task was publicly announced, and even Kakuzu who usually goes to great lengths to collect information on ninjas, accepted it. However, unlike normal ninjas who put an effort to gather information on female ninjas, Kakuzu took a different approach. He contacted Conan for a business discussion. Conan, let's exchange some information about a business I have a few days later. 
Natsuo suddenly realized that the dedicated Kakuzu had disappeared. A representative from Akatsuki suddenly appeared and solemnly stated that Kakuzu had fallen ill and needed some time to recuperate. Of course, we will definitely complete the mission you entrusted to us. As a result, the bodyguard was replaced by a mature woman with short purple hair and a dignified and virtuous demeanor. Yes, it was Conan. What illness does Kakuzu have? Natsuo paused for a moment before asking. Epilepsy. I have already treated him. Conan's voice carried a hint of coldness. Don't worry. He will recover in a few days. During this time, I will transform into Kakuzu and protect the safety of Yorichi clan. Natsuo, question mark, question mark, question mark. He seemed to have never heard that Conan had any medical ninjutsu. Or perhaps the best at healing in Akatsuki was Kakuzu, who was currently lying in a hospital bed with excellent suturing techniques. But it's fine. Although the old man can be relied upon when it comes to money, there's nothing wrong with having an attractive woman around. Then I'll trouble you. Natsuo smiled slightly, his smile very sunny and bright. No trouble at all. I should say this is a mistake Conan nodded calmly. Her voice was slightly cold, and her eyes carried a hint of resentment. Natsuo didn't mind perhaps it was similar to Yuhi Kuranai. Women like her, who lack nothing and are excellent, generally can't stand men who indulge in debauchery, and have multiple partners. It's not a big deal, no need to worry about it. He chatted with this beautiful bodyguard for a while, then went about his own business. Conan watched Natsuo's figure as he walked away inside softly. He's quite handsome. But why does he always make strange requests? The key is that he gives so much money, which makes that damn Kakuzu always target me. Yes, Conan's resentful gaze was not directed at Natsuo, but at a certain elder in Akatsuki. To be honest, if Kakuzu wasn't also working for the organization and had a good work attitude, she really wanted to just kill that old man. This has happened several times. And what's with the growth curve of female ninjas, body measurements, it even includes bust, waist and hip measurements. Kakuzu, oh Kakuzu, you really dare to ask for any kind of information. The more Conan thought about it, the angrier she became. She got up and walked towards Kakuzu's room behind her, planning to beat up this old man wrapped in bandages to vent her anger. Yes, the injuries Kakuzu currently had were also caused by her beating him up. The information on female ninjas is still being collected. But that's not urgent for now. Natsuo still had the medical ninjas from Kanoha arrange a daily exercise schedule for him, as well as exercise schedules for his wives. Although they were not specifically designed, they were sufficient for the time being. At the same time, he also started to seriously study medical knowledge. Natsuo could see clearly that although Kanoha Hospital was already the most powerful medical facility in the ninja world, it had only been established for a few decades, and technology and theory were still in a developmental stage. Without Tsunade overseeing Kanoha Hospital, it was just an ordinary hospital. It was better to study on his own and conduct targeted research. First, I'll use the current exercise schedule as a goal, and in the future, I can research somebody's strengthening serums. Natsuo thought to himself, things like Hashirama's cells, Jugo's cells, and Curse seals. These might be useful for body strengthening serums. For this reason, Natsuo even hired a medical jonin to teach him. Medical ninjutsu is something for the future. In order to once again obtain high quality women from Kanoha, Natsuo not only cleared the Ichiha clan's reputation, but also increased the rewards. The rewards for Chunin level missions remained the same. For Jonin level Kinochis, ninjutsu scroll rewards remained the same while the monetary rewards increased to 100 million Ryo, equivalent to the rewards of three Asumas. A direct doubling. The rewards for cage-level female ninjas were even more exaggerated. 1 billion Ryo bounty 2s ranked ninjutsu scrolls, almost enough to make someone rich and powerful. This generous offer shook the entire Kanoha. Kakuzu, who was lying in bed, struggled to sit up, his eyes flashing with the words take a gamble and it's just life, I don't want it. Then he was slapped back onto the bed by Conan. Don't think I don't know what you're thinking. Conan, no longer the dignified woman, glared at Kakuzu with a face full of anger and embarrassment. If you dare to say to me, why don't you help Natsuo have a child and we split the reward, I'll kill you first. In short, everyone who learned about this mission's rewards widened their eyes, their eyes turning red, panting heavily, and being stimulated to the extreme. And as the instigator, Natsuo faced another problem. He looked at Yuhi Kuranai sitting in front of him with a strange expression. Is it really this accurate to hit the mark with just one shot? That's right. Yuhi Kuranai is pregnant. A moment of passion was enough for an accident to occur. Yuhi Kuranai never expected this to happen even though she was indeed in a dangerous period that day. And they were both drunk and didn't take any precautions. But this is too accurate. Although Naruto World also has contraceptives, Yuhi Kuranai hesitated to purchase them due to being emotionally unstable at the time. In theory, if she had taken some medicine at that time, this problem wouldn't have occurred. But as a virtuous woman, how could Yuhi Kuranai bring herself to buy such medicine? Moreover, her mind was filled with questions like, did I really lose my virginity like this? And why did it turn out like this? In the end, she hesitated for a while. And well, the effective time for taking contraceptives had passed. 
But since they were both drunk and it was just one time, there shouldn't be a big problem. So Yuhi Kurunai didn't pay much attention to this matter. What she cared more about was how she lost her chastity and why she drank so much at that time. After half a month, her period still hadn't come. Well, that's normal. It's not like it follows a strict schedule. It's normal for it to be a few days late. And then another half a month passed. When Yuhi Red felt nauseous and sick while brushing her teeth, she started to panic. She secretly bought a testing kit and took a careful look damn. It's really positive. Why did it turn out like this? Yuhi Kor and I was left speechless. It was just one time. How did it end up like this? Cough cough, Yui Kurinai, calm down. Natsuo coughed. The situation has come to this point, we should face it properly. You dare to say that? Yui Kurinai, with red eyes, pounced on him with teeth and claws. If it weren't for you, how could this have happened? It's all your fault. It's all because of you. What am I supposed to do now? She clawed and bit Natsuo, completely abandoning her usual elegant and matured demeanor. Natsuo's mouth twitched. If I remember correctly, it was you who dragged me and forced. But saying such things now would easily get me killed. Natsuo could only cough and, ignoring Yuhi Kurinai's attacks, hugged her and said, Don't worry, I'll take responsibility. Today, I will go and propose to the Yuhi clan for you. I don't need your proposal. Yuhi Kurinai, upon hearing this, suddenly became angry. I don't care about you. Marriage. Yuhi Kurinai and Natsuo weren't even at the stage of discussing marriage. One could even say that Yuhi Kurinai didn't have any feelings for Natsuo. After all, as an independent woman, how could she like someone who had a harem? Although compared to Asuma, she felt that Natsuo respected women more. But she didn't want to devote herself to Natsuo. Then what do you want to do? Natsuo helplessly spread his hands. Abort it. You dare Yuhi Kurinai became even angrier and reached out to hit him. Marry Natsuo. She didn't want to. Abort the child. That's a small life. And it's her own life inside her belly. How could she bring herself to do it? Neither option was feasible. After angrily beating up the scumbag for 10 minutes, Yuhi Kurinai finally made a decision out of helplessness. The child must be born. But she still wouldn't marry. She also didn't want the label of unwed mother. So, after discussing it, they decided that Natsuo would hire Yuhi Kurinai as a teacher for a year under the identity of an illusionary arts teacher. And when it was time to give birth, Natsuo would secretly find a skilled medical ninja to deliver the baby. This medical ninja would be hired on a lifelong basis, and would have to sign a confidentiality agreement. As for the child, after Yuhi Kurinai went on a mission once, she would raise the child herself, using the excuse of finding an abandoned child. By the way, although this pregnancy was an accident, Natsuo also proposed give him a reward. However, Yuhi Kurinai would never accept such money. If I accept this money, what's the difference between me and those money-seeking women? Yuhi Kurinai said angrily, I can raise the child on my own without your money. But afterwards, she thought again, to have a child for him, raise the child by myself, and take care of the child in the future, while he can freely play with other women, why does it feel like I've been abandoned? Yuhi Kurinai didn't know how to feel. In fact, it's also possible to leave the child with the Ichiha clan. I have many children here, and you can come to see the child anytime. Natsuo coughed and suggested again. Then he was beaten up by Yuhi Kurinai again. This is my child, how can I give it to someone else? Hum lately, Miss Yuhi Kurinai seems a bit irritable. Where is the gentle and elegant goddess? But to sum it up, Yuhi Kurinai, in the end, moved in with the Ichiha. In this wave, Natsuo felt like he won. That's Yuhi Kurinai. With her talent and strength, she is at the top among the ninja women I married. What kind of talented child will she give birth to? Natsuo was filled with anticipation. The Ichiha clan's hiring of Kanoha's illusion master, Yuhi Kurinai, did not cause much trouble. After all, not long ago, the Achiha clan hired several medical teachers, and everyone thought that Natsuo also wanted to make some effort. Although the Achiha clan's inherited illusion techniques are strong, there are only Natsuo and Sasuke, who have no experience in illusions at all. Yuhi Koronai is also one of Kanoha's top illusion masters, so she has something to offer in teaching the Achiha. On the other hand, Asuma was angry for a long time. He approached Yuhi Kurinai, hoping that she would turn down the position, but instead, he received a scolding from her. Is it your business to meddle in my affairs? With this sentence, their conversation ended. Then Yuhi Kurinai moved directly into the Achiha residence. In the following period, she gradually reduced her outings, allowing the villagers and ninjas to gradually overlook her. Otherwise, if her belly grows too big and is seen by others, it will be hard to hide. Of course. Before that, she needs to meet with her friends a few more times. So, while she can still meet people, she grabbed Mitarashi Anko and went to eat dangos. I didn't expect you to become an illusion teacher. Anko happily ate the meatballs with narrowed eyes. Now your reputation has become prominent. To teach Achiha, who is recognized as the strongest in illusions, you are now well recognized as the strongest illusion ninja in Kanoha. 
It's not as exaggerated as you say. Yui Kuronai smiled wryly. There are still many powerful illusion ninjas. But Anko didn't believe it. Then why did Natsuo hire you as a teacher? He must think your illusions are the strongest. This is the Achiha clan's recognition of your strength, something that can be shown anywhere. That's because I accidentally got pregnant with his child. Yuhi Kuronai couldn't say this out loud, but there was a hint of sweetness in her heart. The Achiha clan's recognition can be big or small, but no matter what, it is a way to damage the Achiha's honor and increase her own reputation. Natsuo's choice was the most appropriate and the most dignified way to help her conceal her pregnancy. He can be considered a responsible and good man, but it's a pity that he is too fickle and insists on finding so many girls. Yuhi Kuronai thought to herself, otherwise, maybe we could still Anko didn't think so much. She just said with regret, it's a pity I don't know any illusions, otherwise, I would also want to go. Are you still short of money? Yui Kuronai curiously asked. Of course. Enko sighed, although the snakes in Ryuchi Cave are powerful, the cost of raising them is not small. She uses Orochimaru's secret technique to summon and fight with snakes. For this, she needs to maintain a good relationship with Ryuchi Cave and uphold the contract. While summoning Jutsu seems to require no effort in reality, while the summon beast helps the summoner, the summoner also needs to provide for the consumption of the summon beast, such as a large amount of food. Even Orochimaru needs to pay for the appearance of the 10,000 snakes. Amir Enko would have to pay an even greater price to maintain the relationship. Only those with substantial resources can afford it. Otherwise, this useful ninjutsu would have been used by many people. Yuhi Kuronai naturally understood the reason behind this. However, although she has some wealth, the contract with Ryuchi Cave is not a one-time deal. With long-term consumption, she cannot afford to subsidize Anko. Anko also cannot ask her best friend for help. This is beyond the scope of normal friendship. Speaking of the Achiha, Natsuo's reward for seeking a child has increased again. Anko sighed lightly. Sometimes I can't help but think about selling myself to get some money to raise the snakes. All my ninjutsu relies on snakes. Without money to raise them, my strength won't improve. This way, I don't know when I'll be able to seek revenge. Yuhi Kuronai had a peculiar expression with a hint of complexity in her eyes. Anko had been abandoned by Orochimaru when she trusted him the most. She had thought about seeking revenge against Orochimaru more than once. But she knew that her strength was insufficient, and she couldn't do anything about it. Now, she was being marginalized by Kanohu and was in desperate need of money. If she were to sell herself, it wouldn't surprise Yuhi Kuronai. But she had already given herself to Natsuo. If her best friend did the same, what does this mean? Are they in the same boat? I hope it doesn't come to this. In reality, compared to the small matter of hiring Yuhi Kuronai as a Jinjutsu teacher, it was the increase in rewards for the high-paying mission of conceiving a child that truly shook Kanoa. Especially the reward for cage-level female ninjas. It was outrageously exaggerated. It was said that Rasa, the Kazakiage next door who had almost gone crazy from poverty, started regretting killing Pekora when he saw this. If Pekora was still alive, he could have fathered a child and taken on this mission. The reaction in Kanoha was also immense. For example, the third Hokage suddenly discovered that the number of female ninjas applying to become Jonin had increased tenfold compared to the previous year. They seemed to have suddenly developed unprecedented ambition, each one training seriously and working hard in Kanova's training fields even at three in the morning. At first, the third Hokage was very happy to see this, feeling a great sense of accomplishment. These are all my achievements as the third Hokage. If it weren't for his leadership and lack of discrimination against women, creating a harmonious working environment for female ninjas, how could the number of female ninjas applying to become Jonin have increased so much? So, the third Hokage specifically ordered a report on the proportion of female ninjas among Jonin in the past 10 years, and held a presentation. The third Hokage stated that under his leadership, the outdated tradition of women leaving their jobs after getting married in Kanohu village, had long been surpassed. The new era of female ninjas had the same spirit of daring to fight and striving for progress as male ninjas. The expressions of the people listening to the presentation were strange. After hearing this news, Danzo even ordered Root to actively spread the great achievements of the third Hokage, and work hard to spread his reputation. Saratobi Hirazan listened with great satisfaction, thinking that Danzo finally stopped eyeing the Hokage position under his buttocks and planned to be a loyal root member who would never surface. He was so happy that he ignored the opposition of the shinobi, and granted Danzo many powers. But a few days later, he overheard the newly applied female ninjas chatting privately. Ah, the assessment is so difficult. Yeah, I think I'm going to fail again this time. At this rate, when will I become a jonin and marry into the Achiha clan to become a wealthy lady? He, I'm not as vulgar as you guys. If I become a jonin, I'll work hard in the Achiha clan for a few years, then I can live my whole life without working enjoying a carefree life with a large amount of wealth. The female ninjas chatted, longing for a future where they would have children and receive the generous bonuses from the Ichiha clan. Not far away, the third Hokage, 
Because of this, the third Hokage felt like dying. No wonder that guy Danzo suddenly started spreading my achievements. It turns out that he already knew about the increase in the reward amount posted by the Ichiha clan. The third Hokage felt like a slap had been harshly slapped on his face. He felt both embarrassed and angry, a surge of anger rising in his heart. But at this point, Saratobi Hirazan had no good solution. In the end, he could only make a mental note to remember Danzo's actions, suppress the third Hokage's achievements report meeting, and hope that time would make people slowly forget. On the other hand, Natsuo was much happier. Are you sure you want to accept this mission? Natsuo asked. Yes, I'm sure. The slender Kinochi sitting across from him sighed lightly. But I hope that you, Ichiha, can keep it completely confidential and give me some privacy. This relatively unknown female ninja in the Naruto series, named Misaki, is the first Jonin willing to accept the childbearing mission so far. It should be noted that, except for special cases like Natsuo, any Jonin is a strong individual who has advanced across the battlefield. They have experienced countless bloody battles, have rich experience in mission execution, and even hold high positions in the village. Even the selection of the Hokage requires a Jonin meeting to be convened for voting. Such people may not necessarily accept the childbearing mission for some money. But Misaki is different. She is a Kinochi from a small fallen family. The strongest combat power in the entire clan is this Jonin. Now her ninja clan has fallen into a sorry state. Due to her bad luck, she has encountered strong enemies several times during missions resulting in heavy losses for her family. Now his family doesn't even have a Chunin, and there is a huge gap between high-level combat power and the rest of the clan. To support the family, a large amount of money must be invested in the next generation of the family, and encouraged to advance in their training as soon as possible. This strongest female ninja in the family has to put aside her pride and accept the resources of the Ichiha clan. She is currently the first female ninja who is not marrying into the Ichiha clan and is solely focused on giving birth to a child. Although she signed a contract for a relatively large amount to have a child, the agreement was signed for double the amount. Misaki seemed to have finally let go of the weight in her heart and smiled bitterly. It is fortunate that you have now also advanced towards Jonin, otherwise I would not have been able to let go of my pride and accept this task. The ninja world is a typical male-dominated world, with a very high proportion of strong male individuals. If a female ninja marries someone who is much weaker than her, it will cause a lot of gossip and be looked down upon. Natsuo knew this but still chose to hide his strength. When facing Root's assassination, he easily defeated the assassins because he pretended to be weak, and they miscalculated his strength. The reason was to relax the surveillance on the Ichiha clan by Kanoha's senior management, and also obtain some benefits from the third Hokage. Although there are more and more children being born and Natsuo is quickly becoming stronger. Even if Kanoha were to make a move against him, he could still escape from Kanoha. But it is obvious that he would lose the peaceful environment of Kanoha as a place to find a wife. Compared to the psychological barriers of female ninjas, the environment of Kanoha village for finding a wife is more important. Anyway, Tsunade, the only cage-level female ninja in Kanoha village, is not there, and the highest quality female ninjas in Kanoha are only Jonin at best. So, he doesn't care about the resistance from these women. For Natsuo, Kanoha village is still the best place to find a large number of potential wives. Besides, where there is a first, there is a second. There are also many Jonin women from fallen families in Kanoha. The popularity of the task to have a child continues to increase. Even the properties around the Achiha clan residents have quickly appreciated and value female ninjas want to live close to the Achiha clan and see if they can have a chance encounter. They are not stupid. Although everyone is officially considered Natsuo's wives after accepting the mission and they all receive the same rewards. But there are still differences in status among the wives. For example, Yukino, who has the most emotional investment and discharged friends with Natsuo, receives treatment as the main wife, managing the family's finances, and enjoying the most affection. While Yuzuki Yugao, who has the highest talent and is also beautiful, ranks second. Perhaps her ranking will change once the Jonin female ninja handles family matters, and officially moves into the Achiha residence. Some wives who are good at competing for favor, or in other words, are willing to please others, are ranked lower, while Natsuo treats the other wives fairly. It is clear that the frequency and favoritism differ. After all, Natsuo is also human. Beautiful people suffer, handsome people are exhausted. He subconsciously wants to dote on women who are more beautiful, have better talent, and can give birth to exceptionally talented Ichiha children. So, if I were to meet Natsuo through a chance encounter, slowly play some tricks, and capture his heart, Marrying into the Achiha, becoming the head of the clan, and reaching the pinnacle of life. Isn't that more profitable than dry mission rewards? Moreover, there are some women who are weaker in strength, do not meet the mission criteria, but are confident in their appearance, and believe that they can capture Natsuo and become noble ladies. They need a channel to interact with Natsuo. So, when Natsuo noticed that the property prices around the Achiha residence were rising, 
he immediately sensed what those girls were thinking. And then he discovered a business opportunity. I have decided to open up the Achiha clan residence and establish facilities and entertainment venues specifically for women. Natsuo didn't hesitate to say, it was clearly my Achiha's credit. Why should we push the money out and let the third Hokage earn these taxes? This money should have belonged to our Achiha clan. By then, I'll earn money from women and use that money to support my women. Isn't that a better way to invest the money instead of giving it to Konoha? And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.